The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Don't wait for an AC breakdown this summer. Get a free in-home estimate with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Schedule your appointment today at standardheating.com. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93X. World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship. Introducing from Tehran, Iran, the Iron Sheik. He is indeed one of the great World Wrestling Federation athletes. However, again, a lot of people do not like the Iron Sheik. I hope somebody call in the Oakland, California, or San Francisco hospital to the bring the host- ambulance we, we over have, there. We have hospitals both in San Francisco and Oakland. Uh, That's yeah. right. No, you don't have to uh, correct me. I know my English is not good like you said. We lost a pro wrestling legend today, the Iron Sheik. All right, showtime. Oh, man, Cubby. I might have a difficult time making sense right here from the get-go. And it might affect me all day. I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed by the thoughts of how to put into words the life of the Iron Sheik. It's... It's like a movie, really. His story, and they have actually have made a couple documentaries about it that are very interesting. I, as you know, my wife is a huge old school. She likes current wrestling, but huge old school wrestling. She was. She took this tough. Uh, this news was very difficult for her. Uh, I, I liked the Iron Sheik. I liked wrestling when I was a kid, but not like she did. I know she has deep knowledge of that era of television wrestling she and i have had conversations on the topic i'm sorry sorry to hear that <coughs> it was uh that it had a, a a negative effect on her but how could it not and she she loved also sergeant slaughter and their oh, rivalry no. so much so that her car is named sergeant slaughter That's sweet <laughs> <laughs> she named it sergeant slaughter in in you know honor of mr slaughter that opening audio right there he and Mean Gene going back and forth. <laughs> you know, Mean Gene was the best man at the Iron Sheik's wedding. <laughs> uh, I just... Shoot, it, he was married for 47 years. Same woman. Cow. Yeah. The man passed away yesterday at 81 years old, if you, if you didn't hear. The Iron Sheik. And it is. It's overwhelming to, to try and put into words the story of his life. His impact on the wrestling world. His impact on wrestling fans. He was one of a kind in so many ways. So many ways. As a kid watching him on television, it was just a real thrill. Here's what popped up on his Twitter page yesterday. It says, today we gather with heavy hearts to bid farewell to a true legend, a force of nature an iconic figure who left an incredible mark on the world of professional wrestling. And beyond that, I, I'd like to add, he was bigger than just wrestling. Uh, but I'll continue on with the tweet. It said, It is with great sadness that we share the news of the passing of the Iron Sheik, but we also take solace in knowing that he departed this world peacefully, leaving behind a legacy that will endure for generations to come. So he passes at 81. Yes. Doesn't really start his wrestling career until he's 30. 30 years old. And he has to escape Iran. Literally escape Iran. There's hits on his life. You know, tragically, he loses his daughter 10, 10, 10 11, 12, 13 years ago. How yeah, long that was. His personal life was tough yeah. mm-hmm. from the beginning. Uh, grew up in a spider hole with no running water. Uh, becomes a... Uh, a Greco-Roman star in Iran. In the military. He, go, he goes to the military in Did Iran. Did some time in the military. But sure, yeah, by the time he... And, and you know, a Minnesotan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that this is where he first came, right? Yeah, he uh, when came, he left Iran, he came straight to Minnesota. Yep. Right. Trained Mer- with Vern Gagne, uh, Rick Vern, Flair. Vern Gagne gets a hold of the guy. Um, but right... I think when he originally came to the States and came here to Minnesota, I believe he 
coached Greco-Roman wrestling. Did he at the U? At the U of M. He did at the yeah, U of M. he was at the U. Okay, I, I thought he had a connection to at the U of the, M. At the University of Minnesota. Then Vern Gagne gets up. Can you imagine what Vern Gagne was thinking when he got a hold of this guy? <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, something that, if you're not familiar, something you should, you should know about the Iron Sheik. This guy was obscenely powerful. Obscenely strong. Do you remember watching? Who was I? Was it you and I, Cubby, watching the workout videos that this guy? Yeah. It was. It, I mean, a lot of those guys, it's impressive, but you're right. This one does stand out. There was. He was just built. I'm not trying to dive into the hip term of the of the young people here, but he was built differently. I I don't know many athletes outside of wrestling who had the strength that this guy had. I, so it, it was truly, I bet you Vern Gagne thought, oh, holy balls, I could do anything with this guy. <laughs> I think I'm the only one here that watches Young Rock, Dwayne I Johnson. Did a little bit. You, you watched the, a little bit? Like the early, like first or second season, that was, I think I stopped. Well, they had an Iron Sheik on there. I mean, they have a lot of wrestlers on there, people portraying the wrestlers. And the Iron <laughs> Sheik wasn't bad. <laughs> Some of them was a, were a little cringy, and you thought... You know, you could have cast a little better than this. <laughs> uh -huh. But the Iron Sheik actually was pretty decent. And I was mentioning those documentaries. There's two of them. The Sheik and then A&E's WWE Legends Iron Sheik. Both you can watch for free. I believe both I watched the first good. one. I believe I watched the Sheik. The, yeah, I don't I don't I don't normally go towards the WWE created documentaries just because I think they're going to be because it's made by the WWE, they're going to polish them up and maybe cut out some of the good or bad stuff. So I normally go away from their products when it comes to documentaries. I, I think it was that first documentary you mentioned, and, and back to his insane strength, they were showing some kind of a f upper body arm workout that the Iron Sheik could do that I just... I forgot who was who was there with them, but they were basically saying, there's not one swing and D on planet Earth that can do this aside They'll from blast D. blast those oh, delts, well. man. The yeah. delts, baby. They'll blast them. They're blasted. <laughs> I mean, he was just one of the greatest characters wrestling has ever seen. Damn near every heel owes a debt of gratitude to the Iron mm -hmm. Sheik. Uh, and a true athlete, like we were just discussing. But also... Uh, something that we, we made mention of already. His personal life was tough. He, he was lucky to make it to 81 years old. Life wasn't easy for the Sheik. He had his good times in the 80s, like a lot of wrestlers, when, when Hulkamania took off, and he was a big reason why Hulkamania took off. If, if Hulk Hogan hadn't had that perfect rival... Who knows how far Hulkamania would have gone. He was a huge part of that. But, you know, after that era died, you know, after wrestling changed uh, a little bit, there were a lot of stars like the Sheik who kind of found themselves pushed off to the wayside because they didn't look like mm -hmm. rock stars, because they couldn't do the acrobatics that became popular in the 90s. He found himself with little or nothing. Drugs. Yeah, had a couple of issues there, didn't he? Personal tragedies, like yeah. Josh mentioned. His daughter was murdered. Yeah. I, I can't imagine such a thing. Mm -mm. But he kept going, and he got clean, and he made it. He made it. The Sheik won. And I, I, I don't think he ever knew what he meant to the business. I don't no. think he ever. I don't think he ever really knew. Maybe he was humble in that. I don't know for sure, and just brushed it off. But I don't think he ever really understood how much he meant to the business. He was like the first big, big-time heel. Oh, absolutely. You know, like, he started that role. I no. saw a lot of wrestlers saying he was the best heel. Oh, oh man. And, oh, and like, I think you, you mentioned it, Nick. Every heel sense owes a debt of gratitude to the Iron Sheik for showing him how it's done. Mm -hmm. He was so perfect in that role because so much of it was legitimate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um... He wasn't playing an Iranian. He was an Iranian. Right. Uh, and, and it was a perfect time, too, because I remember during that time, I was scared of Russia. I was scared of Iran. And he used to, I mean, he would talk about how they're both number one. <laughs> well, then they would team up with Nikolai Volkov, and they would do the Russian and Iran. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> They'd sing the Russian yeah. anthem. Yep. Yeah, he, yeah. Didn't, he didn't fake broken English. He spoke he broken actually, English. Yeah. He spoke it.
Yeah. Uh, I mean, like I was saying here, his best man was Mean Gene. A lot of times on the mic, he called him Gene Mean <laughs> because he was that. You know, English was a second language for the man. He's got to mean so much to um, international wrestlers, too. Just being able to come over and make a big name for yourself in America. Like How? you said, coming from nothing and now, you know, huge. And mm. is, at that age? Yeah. You know, st starting at 30? It's yeah. Impre well, by that I mean starting in the WWF yeah. at, at 30. So um, I was going to ask you guys, was it common knowledge that The Rock took Jabroni from the Iron Cheek? I had never heard that oh. until yesterday. I've never oh, heard really? that until you sent the clip. Okay. Oh, I, I had heard that. I don't know if it was common knowledge. I know, like, cause Iron Sheik said, and then The Rock just kind of popularized it, obviously. He made it what it yeah. is today, the word I had no, I had no clue that that's where he got it. And The Rock <laughs> said, yeah, this is, this is where Jabroni came from. I didn't make it up. We, we oh, all, that's sweet. We all should start calling each other Jabronis. Yeah. We did for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, if, in the early... In the Stone Cold, uh, you know, The Rock days, we did call each other Jabronis. In the early, yeah, exactly. The early 2000s, late 90s, we couldn't stop calling each other Jabronis because of the, like Josh just described, The Rock's popular. And then it and went forget, away. You moved to a particular intersection, did, did you not, during that time? <laughs> well, who, me personally? Yeah, you personally. I, I moved, when I moved, it was uh, Smackdown Boulevard and No your role uh, drive uh, right. something like that yeah. right. i had a buddy in high school that used the word jabroni constantly it's a great word i it loved is. it it's mm -hmm. in the dictionary no you, way you know and there's there's a group of people that may just think of the iron cheek as a twitter star they bring might, that up. Love might yeah. not twitter. even might not even know realize about he was a wrestler yeah you know, i didn't know too much obviously about like all that he's accomplished in his life but i do know his twitter because he's it's always capital letters it, yeah it's always cap he's all always caps. telling hulk hogan to go f himself it's, and, it's all, <laughs> and he has comments on stuff that makes no sense yep. why he would comment on that so awesome isn't that something how that played out i mean twitter may have saved the iron sheik yeah. yeah. Uh, sometime in the, I don't know, 2005, six, I think it was a couple of uh, younger relatives of his or something. Uh, if you know the exact story, go ahead. Younger family members of his that, you know, uh, obviously they, they knew what a character he was in real life and in the ring. And uh, one of them had the idea to create this Iron Sheik Twitter account. Now, it wasn't necessarily all the time or any of the time that the Sheik was behind these tweets. Yeah, I don't think he had ever written any of them. It but. was these young people kind of knowing his persona and, you know, using his personality and, and, and putting it up on Twitter. And, I mean, I remember the first time I was talking wrestling with somebody in the, you know, 2008, 9, 10, who knows? It was many years ago. I was talking wrestling and the Iron Sheik came up and someone said, ha, ha, yeah, you know, and and like his Twitter page. And I said, what? And they said, yeah, he's, he's hilarious on Twitter. I've never been on Twitter before. I had no idea that he had gained all of this new steam yeah. on Twitter. So, like, it's a huge actually, account. as a younger person, you don't know anything about his career other than his Twitter life. That That's, that's yep. incredible. Where the hell did I put all those stupid tweets of his where he's knocking everybody around. <laughs> I know I got it in here somewhere. Oh, over, over here. So yeah, he's, that, that's, that's, that's a hell of a story that suddenly this guy who was a mid-80s you know, a headliner on television wrestling becomes one of the more popular characters in on Twitter, in Twitter, whatever, however you say it. I don't when, we, when we were going to cover this here in the news, there was a couple tweets that I was going to point out that I thought were pretty funny. Like Go ahead. He had one that said, take a minute of your day to be nice to someone, you dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> 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 and then, you know, I, I'm sure you've seen the stories on the Canadian wildfires right now. Um, and so he referenced those wildfires just blanketing the East Coast with the smoke and said... F the wildfires, all caps, of course. <laughs> he really didn't like Hogan. No. He did not like Hulk Hogan. He wished my buddy a happy birthday on Twitter and even worked in an insult on Hulk Hogan. He said, happy birthday to at DJ Bonix. You are intelligent and I happy for you. You are not like that piece of ass Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, an incredible story that years go by, Twitter comes along. And suddenly the Iron Sheik is more popular than ever. So...
On that topic, Ultimate Classic Rock website noticed that over the years, the Iron Sheik, or at least his Twitter people, like to talk about rock music. Um, and in the Iron Sheik style, it was, you know, broken English, sometimes very insulting stuff. But sometimes, I mean, the guy could be a real sweetheart. Um, you, uh, you could see in his tweets the emotion that he felt when a, when a rock star passed. I mean, like, for instance, when Eddie Van Halen passed, uh, Iron Sheik tweeted, He loved the wrestling. Eddie Van Halen, it break my heart. You have so much talent, and you help to make the rock and roll I miss you forever. Uh, Glenn Fry, God bless you forever. That's what he tweeted when Glenn Fry died. Vinnie Paul, God bless you forever. Malcolm Young, Bubba, God bless you forever. The ACDC, the real. But he got nasty, too, with things like Nickelback, you effing jabroni. Never, ever F with the slipknot or I break your effing five-cent neck. <laughs> <laughs> was that when didn't Corey Taylor and Chad Kruger now it, it's Kruger right yeah. yeah didn't they have like a little rivalry yeah that must be what he was referring yeah. to once the Iron Sheik tweeted I wish the Jimi Hendrix still alive so he can light his guitar and stick it up the ass of Hulk Hogan <laughs> <laughs> he hey. once tweeted that Bruce Springsteen is the legend of the earth I if you don't, that. if you don't love the Dave Grohl, go f yourself. <laughs> he felt the same same way about Steely Dan. He had a lot of Steely Dan tweets oh. telling people to f off if they weren't fans. <laughs> oh my God! This is just on music. Some of the tweets the uh, Iron Sheik sent out. Uh, sometimes he would make smart ass comments about rock lyrics like "Desperado." Why don't you come to your senses, you dumb son of a bitch? <laughs> I want to rock and roll all night and go F yourself every day. <laughs> bon Jovi, Bubba, you embarrass me. Next time I see you... Did Bon Jovi do a cover of Here Comes the Sun? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't understand that one. Because it says, Bon Jovi, Bubba, you embarrass me. You do the Here Comes the Sun. Next time I see you... Here comes the suplex on your effing head. Yeah, he, perform the he, Joan, perform go ahead. he performed it live once a couple times. Do you have the Joan Jett one? Yes, I love the rock and roll, but the effing jukebox costs more than a dime. Get your sh together, Joan <laughs> Jett. <laughs> I camel clutch John Bon Jovi in a bed of roses. We built this city on rock and roll and beating the F out of Hulk Hogan. That was one of my favorites. Uh, when I'm feeling blue, all I have to do is take a look at you. Then I'm not so blue because Hulk Hogan, I beat the F out of you. What? <laughs> it's poetic. I love that. Obla D, obla da, life can go F itself. <laughs> if there was something in the air that night and the stars were bright, then Fernando, you dumb son of a bitch, she wanted to have the sex with you, you jabroni. <laughs> The sex. Hello, Rod Stewart. Have I told you lately to go F yourself? <laughs> it's great stuff. <laughs> Rod Stewart. I don't like anybody going after Rod Stewart, but if it's going to be anybody, it might as well be the Iron Sheet. I don't know what his issue with Rod Stewart is. <laughs> so there you go. Sad day. One of his final tweets simply said F Hogan. <laughs> if somebody didn't already mention that, I'm sorry if they did. One of the greatest villains, one of the greatest characters. So in honor of the Sheik, I'd like to say just one more time. Because I know I've done this bit over and over again over the years on this radio program. Just one more time to honor the memory of the Sheik. I would like to say Iran number one, Russia number one, USA, Canada. Phooey. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Bubba. Mm-hmm. So, God help us all. I wasn't planned on going in any other direction with this break than Iron Sheik uh, tribute, so someone can go from here. Well, I, I'm all out of uh, uh, I'm all out of things. As I often do, I thought of you yesterday, Nick. Oh, because, well, thank you, uh, Cubby. 
Uh, me, my boys, and my wife, we took some lime, lime scooters around St. Paul, and boy, was that fun. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. Uh, my oldest said he's got an itch. He's looking on Amazon yesterday. He wants to buy an electric scooter. I get it. <laughs> Obviously, I get it. No kidding. You guys went downtown. You jumped on them? Yeah. You, we, your stepson and your stepdaughter? Uh, no, my uh, youngest. So oh. my, my son, and my, my oldest, and then my wife. And I, I want to give my wife credit because she's terrified of all that kind of stuff. Like, she's scared of riding bikes, scared of it, everything. But she ended up doing okay. I mean, she looked ridiculous because, you know, when you see nerves on a person yeah, or something no. like that? Yeah. She's just so tight on that thing. <laughs> but, yeah, we were whipping around, and my goodness, that's a blast. No accidents? No, nothing. Nice. It's very easy. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to do. I thought I would be a little wobbly at first on the little electric scooter. But, uh, boy, I took it for a spin yesterday, and it's very easy to do. Once you get that thing cooking, you really don't wobble much. Word. Mm -hmm. I don't. I was scared. Her more, I think, uh, wobbly than I should have been because I like couldn't get it in my head that you used the brake on the the handle that you don't have to like put your foot oh, down like, like a normal scooter. Foot? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So cause uh, I kept putting my foot down, and I'm like, what am I doing? No. <laughs> it remind you know I used to up until you know we had my youngest son. Um, I rode motorcycles the majority of my life, and I, ha I really hadn't missed it, surprisingly so, until riding these things around, and I thought, well, I thought, I got to get one of these scooters. I'm like, you know what, maybe I'll get an e-bike. You know, I'm like, forget it. I'm just going to get a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, I love to open that thing up. It was a blast. But there was some dude, and I thought, yeah, I'm getting pretty good at this. But there was, like, some dude that was, it was like a ballet or some sort of figure skating championship. It was just beautiful the way he was riding it, and he's weaving in and out of lines like a douchebag. I mean, he did look like a douchebag, but it was, it was pure talent. Was it? <laughs> and they are just littered everywhere. I never go to the downtowns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if you're looking for one, it's pretty easy to find. They're yeah. littered absolutely they're, everywhere. They're always right outside my, the front door of my apartment. There's always a couple of them sitting there. So... Your son is now has the itch, and he's shopping around on the internet. Yeah, yeah, he's and my youngest, he's pretty good at it too. Um, they, if, I, if I could remember the name of the the brand of scooter that I bought, I'd I'd, I'd let you know right now because uh, you know, like you guys know, I, I bought one a couple weeks ago. I effing love it. Yeah, um, I was going to ask you about it. Yeah, I told him just to hold off because I'd ask about yours. Yeah, yeah. Those are fun, though. Oh. The only thing that's confusing, so you, cause you've never rented one, right, Nick? No. All right, so you can set up these group rides. And so I did, and I looked at my credit card. I had, like, 18 charges, you know, because oh, they, yeah. they hold some of them and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yep. It's very oh. confusing. Yep. So I might have paid an incredible amount of money to do this. I'm not 100% <laughs> <I'm not laughs> sure yet. It does <laughs> add up quick. It really does. <laughs> I mean, this might be one and done for me, depending on how much I actually do get charged. But, yeah, I should show you just that it's like charge after charge after charge. They are a blast, man. Uh, I'm so happy that I, I went through with buying one right away. And it's very easy. It's, it is. I, I feel very comfortable. Uh, and I did almost immediately whipping around my neighborhood on this scooter. But it has crossed my mind a couple of times. I mean, if I was to hit a pothole or, oh, yeah. <laughs> or hit a rock when you're going top speed, I would probably end up in the emergency room. Oh, well, you're I, breaking something for sure. I, I think I mentioned this, that they have like a whole e-scooter wing at your local hospital. Yeah, that crossed my mind a couple times yesterday because, you know, I was cooking along pretty good. And, you know, if I were a young guy, you know, you can roll your way out of certain situations. At my age now, uh, I don't... It was kind of funny. I was playing it out in my head, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if I came to a dead stop right now, what would I do? And, and the answer is nothing. I would just become a stain. <laughs> we got to your head. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I don't think I'm physically... You know that one time I came flying out of a car Yep. Uh, when I was a young guy, and I was able to tuck and roll just in midair. I came flying out the passenger seat of a car that was going 40 miles an hour when Jeez. I was about to... Me and the gal I was with, we're both lucky we met. I think unless you're Ashley carrying bags of soup, it's instinct to protect your head and face. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. That you probably don't have to think about it too much. That's well, true. That's what you it, think. It's not think about it. It's, it's will, would I be, because I remember very vividly coming out of that motor vehicle. And I remember very vividly how I was, everything kind of went into suspended animation. And I was able, because I was 20, I was able to get myself tucked over and roll 
I there's no way physically I think I could do that. So I would just, you know what I mean? Just <laughs> just skid. Dead Ugh. stop. Just, I, all oh. the all my weight would be right on my forehead. <laughs> so maybe I should start. I, I do worry that we're going to end up, you know, just uh, on ventilators Maybe or wear a helmet. See, that's the thing is I went and I bought a helmet when I got my motorcycle. Some of you call it an electric bicycle. I call it a motorcycle. I, I did buy a helmet. I put it on once. I took it to the American Legion. Some of the Vietnam vets called me a sissy, and I, now I haven't worn it yeah. since. I you know, it's funny. Yeah. I think about that, too. But, so, you know, when you, you see kids on bikes with helmets all the time now, and it, when we were kids... I mean, you'd be a target oh, if you were. Oh, and and now, so now, it's, now it's just so common. I, should, I don't even think about it. I should be wearing a brain a brain bucket, but I just. Uh... What if you got a cool like pilot's helmet, you know, like a Top Gun type helmet with like the visor Or get stuff? one of those with like oh. the fake mohawk or spikes on the top. <laughs> you know, I, wear aviator glasses. I'd feel like a dork. I would. I, would. I felt like a dork yesterday. I thought everybody's looking at me going, this is this guy's first time. <laughs> you knew what you were doing. BMX dad Jesus said electric scooters are rookie status. What does that mean? One wheels are where it's Dude, at. That's what I is want. Is that that skateboard looking yeah. thing with yeah. the big fat wheel in the middle? Yeah, it's supposed to mimic like snowboarding and stuff. Uh, I, I did. Dangerous. I did one of those once, and it was it was I was not comfortable on it whatsoever. Oh, I would love it. This Since tech I snowboard, but um, so the one wheels and also these boosted boards, they're the electric skateboards. Those can get up to twenty five miles per hour. Wow. I so see. I like scary. having the handle. So imagine hitting a pothole at twenty five yeah. and nothing to grab onto. This tech yeah. says it's oh. the best thing I ever bought. I do nightly cruises around the neighborhood. You gotta buy a couple for the fam. That's from Bougie Butthole Jesus. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you ought to do it, Josh. I'm uh, I'm terribly pleased with mine. Yeah, they don't have them in the suburbs. I've never seen one. Overly pleased. What do you mean, seen them? Oh, you mean like set up on the sidewalk, yeah. ready to ride? Like yesterday, like I said, like downtown St. Paul, they were absolutely everywhere. Word. Either, is anybody watching Platonic on Apple TV Plus? No. Never oh. saw it. I've been wanting to. Those are good. It's it. it's pretty funny. Uh, Seth Rogen. Yeah. And, oh, I forget the girl, but she's funny. She's so good. Um, Get to the funny people. So, <laughs> There's a bit in there. It's a reoccurring bit, and it's so simple, and it's so fun. He, anytime Seth Rogen sees those scooters, he hates them. So he just throws them. He beats them. <laughs> yes, they were, I love him. They were bowling beer kegs at him. I mean, he just hates those scooters. <laughs> oh. And it's one of those just like stupid little bits that has nothing to do with the show. Yep. But we, we can't walk by one without destroying it. That's <laughs> awesome. Oh. Rose Byrne's the woman. In Rose the show. Byrne, yeah, yeah, she's good. She's, she's very good. You know what's funny is that her accent sounds so put on and fake. But she is Australian. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's it's a real accent, but it doesn't. It sounds fake. I had to look it up because I'm like, man, that is a terrible Australian accent. Because we know Australian Jesus, and he sounds what you'd expect. Yeah, can't can't make out a word that Australian Jesus says. You, oh yeah, well he he texted that yesterday. Can't make out a word. Saying he's hoping he can win tickets to our boat cruise so he can try and communicate with you. Oh, <laughs> so you're enjoying the show called what's it called? Yeah, it's pretty good. Platonic. 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 Good to know. Hey, here's the deal. Are we still lined up for this? A uh, special guest in yeah. studio today? Mm -hmm. Special guest in studio today starting at 730. You've heard him over the last few months on our program on the telephone. This is the first time we're going to get him in person. Uh, a guy who we've really grown to like a lot. And it happened almost instantly just because he's a good dude. He plays for the Minnesota Vikings. He's the long snapper. We are personally responsible for putting him in the Pro Bowl. <laughs> Andrew DePaula will be here at 730. And he's able to spend about a half hour with us. Uh, jaw Jack, and I'm really looking forward to meeting the guy face to face. Really looking forward to it. Find out what the hell he's been doing with his summer. I think they're already. Are they already going through stupid football practice? Mini camp. Yeah, oh, that gosh, is so dumb. What? It's June. Or no, it's like involuntary. It's like uh, this is the voluntary OTAs. ones. Yeah, voluntary OTAs. Oh god. Or that's... unless the the involuntary involuntary <laughs> <laughs> the mandatory ones the man might start today. Uh, it's yeah. relatively soon. Yeah. God, I hate football. <laughs> but you're right. It's the uh, voluntary ones. Yeah. By the way, people are saying, I was saying I don't see them in the suburbs, these uh, e-scooters. Yeah. People, I, I got a ton of texts saying Hastings. Hastings has a bunch. got all. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, really? And Seth Rogen is the only one. There's a lot of people that hate those things. 
Oh, well, I can see why, because like I said, they're littered everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be and frustrating. That, that's why they hate them, because they're everywhere? Yeah. It's, and, you know, people. some people are on there just uh, cruising around, not paying any attention. Yeah, yeah that's uh, the reason I don't traffic. like them. <laughs> I, I pay very little attention when I'm on mine, so... I get it. I guess I get it. Here's the deal. we got to take a break. Andrew DePaula coming in at 730. Uh, God rest the soul of the Iron Sheik, and we probably will discuss him a little bit later as well. We'll be right back on the Half-Fast Morning Show. Half-Fast Morning Show. 69. <laughs> this show sucks. Who are you, fart knockers? 93X. CJ Ham for standard heating and air conditioning. When I'm on the field, I can take anything. But at home with my family, we like everything to be comfortable. That's why I trust the pros at Standard. They've been keeping Minnesotans like me comfortable for over 90 years. Is your cooling system making strange noises or not cooling properly? Don't wait for an AC breakdown this summer. Get a free in-home estimate with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Schedule your appointment today at standardheating.com. You are getting sleepy. Your CPAP mask is clamped tightly to your face. You will not toss and turn through the whooshing. You will not throw the mask. It's not working, Harold. People who struggle with CPAP have partners who struggle too. Luckily, now there's Inspire. No mask, no hose, just sleep. When I snap my fingers, you will remember to visit InspireSleep.com. Inspire is not for everyone. Talk to your doctor to see if it's right for you and review important safety information at InspireSleep.com. Stupid news on the Half-Assed Morning Show. Yeah. All right, you dirty pricks. The stupid news, huh? You know, you true crime fans have gone too far now. You watch too much of that stuff, and it's making some of you go mental. A true effing crime fan in South Korea killed someone she met online out of curiosity to see what murder would be like for real skis. You've had those thoughts, haven't you, Ashley? <laughs> it's funny you say that. I wanted to ask out loud if anyone's had those thoughts, that curiosity, but I was afraid of what Ashley would say. <laughs> you watch too much of that stuff, too, Josh. I really yeah. don't. Ah! I listen to the Dateline podcast. It's okay, dude. And... It's okay. I'm not mad at you or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were really <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God! <laughs> Lock the door! <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I don't get into it too much. Uh, I do like the Dateline podcast better than the show. I, I mentioned before, like, you know, in 2020, you know, you, you know uh, I stopped. There's just too much crap going on. I couldn't, I didn't need any more negativity. But uh, I did pick up the podcast a little bit again. All right. But I don't really, like, there's so many of those shows um, a couple of podcasts. I take that back. There's been a couple of podcasts. Serial, the first season of Serial, that actually got me into podcasting. That was huge. Uh, yeah, that's. I had heard so many good things about it. I listened to that. I liked that one. Um, Sword and Scale. I like that one. I had listened to that for a little while, and then that one, I, I when I kind of quit all this stuff, I didn't go back to that one. But I like that they're just such good storytellers on Dateline. You know who doesn't need true crime television programming to have sick murderous thoughts? Who that? Wobble. <laughs> I don't know, Waffle. You oh. don't seem like a murderous thought. Guy. There are squirrels having knife fights in his head right now. Oh, no, I could never. Ah. Oh, and the sight of blood? Oh, I'd oh, faint. Oh, that's true. <laughs> well, it, just, it doesn't have to be blood. Yeah, there's. talk to Ashley. There's a lot of ways you could kill a person. <laughs> there doesn't have to be blood. <laughs> yeah, but then strength. You need to strangle them. I don't think I have that. Poison. You don't have Ooh, the poison. strength for that, but there is poison. <laughs> right. Poison. Always that, poison. Poison. Right. Now, that... From uh, watching or listening to Dateline, that is something they say women do a lot. Yeah, because it's the, not. Uh, <laughs> by that I mean the oh. women who kill, not yeah. not just women in general. Right. I'll take a little poison in my coffee, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, women are known not, uh, when they're killers not to be uh, brutal. They don't like to be. They, they are less likely to like be an axe murderer. That's yeah, that's what I've heard. So here's the deal. This is a dick move, no doubt. A gal killed someone she met online because she was curious about what murder was like in real life. A 23-year-old gal who did this this killing. Uh, a gal named Jung Yoo Jung. 
she went ahead and killed somebody dead. And well, not I hope on- she got it out of her system. <laughs> M- maybe. Hmm, actually, I don't really like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, no, I said it wasn't for me. <laughs> not only that, she dismembered the body. Oh, she went for it. She did. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I had thought she probably would be like the uh, perfect picture of insanity just when you look at her, but she looks like the sweetest librarian, like a young or a, like a kindergarten teacher. She does look very sweet and innocent. Police say they believe the killing was done, quote, out of curiosity. The young gal's curiosity, they say, was driven by her desire to experience what murder was like firsthand. She confessed to the murder. Initially, she claimed to have killed the victim during an argument. But then investigators came up with some evidence that contradicted that, and she upped him and admitted, all right, fine. I was just curious. She had become obsessed with murder from television programs and books. They looked through her phone records and they saw three months worth of searching things like how to hide a corpse (laughs) and such. She searched for a victim online. She eventually found one through an app that connects parents with private tutors. Two days before the killing, she contacted the victim, posing as the mother of a ninth grader, to arrange a visit to the victim's home. Would you tutor my child? Well, yes, I will. Okay, I'll bring her over. Then she shows up at the victim's house dressed as a ninth grader, wearing a school uniform and everything, and then she stabs that lady to death. And then she dismembered the body. She put some of the chunks in the suitcase and threw it in the woods by a river. Some of the other chunks were found at her house. Why did she save what? some of them? Huh? <laughs> As trophies? <laughs> she ran out of suitcases. You're right, Ashley. That is so wasteful. <laughs> you the, think uh, if video... she's... Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. You, no, you go. Uh, if you think if she's watching all these crime shows, she would be better at hiding her track. That's what I was going to say. She did her best. It seems kind of amateur it for her, her love time. and murder podcast. She, she and all did this. her best. Jesus, you guys. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's not like she bought a pig farm and then got rid of the body that way. See, Listen to the these way to two like, oh, I would have known how to hide that body. <laughs> no. She doesn't know what she's doing. Now, Waffle, the teeth, though, they, they don't eat the teeth. Just a I second ago, Waffle, you were acting yeah. like, oh, I've never had a thought like that in my life, but it clearly, and that, now that I think about it. Squirrels having knife fights. I forgot about this. You, your Sims video game playing oh. is the most disturbing thing I've ever heard. And yeah, Ashley's. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I got that idea from my sister because she's all into all these murder podcasts, TV shows, and all that. She said, if I ever got a pig farm, watch out, Andrew. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? That she'd kill me. Oh, she's <laughs> your own Who's sister? Andrew? A pig <laughs> farm? I'm not following this. What does that mean? Pigs eat the body. Yeah, they eat oh, the body. Oh, pigs except, eat uh, the... Oh, but they will teeth. eat the teeth, I guess. Oh, I was okay. always told they wouldn't, but I guess it makes sense if they're eating the other bones. You have sick thoughts, Wapple. <laughs> eh, sometimes. Yeah, just a second so, ago, I, I, I totally okay. believed you. Yeah, you have sick You could have killed me so easily. <laughs> <laughs> I would have felt Dang so it. safe around you. The two of you over there, Wapple and Ashley, you're criticizing, you know, the rookie um, mistakes. There, There's plenty of information here in the story about how this Jew... Uh, Jung Yu Jung, the killer lady from South Korea. There's plenty. Of, there was plenty of information in here about bleach and things like that. Oh. I, I, I left it out of the story. We didn't need to get into all that. So she, she did do some things to try to cover her tracks. Okay. But it's pretty sick. They say that she was a loner who has been unemployed since graduating high school five years ago. She did tell reporters that she felt really sorry for the victim's family. She also said that she thought at the time she was, quote, out of her mind. I would agree with that without knowing anything else about Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Police are conducting tests to see if she is a psychopath. I'm going to go with yes. That's really sad and pathetic and disturbing. Hmm. 
Just another army mechanic, Jesus said, if you've played The Sims and haven't taken the ladder out of the pool while they're swimming, you haven't played it right. <laughs> <laughs> That's, true. Totally. That's where it all starts. Yep. It was really fascinating hearing those stories because I spent about 10 minutes playing The Sims. I remember somewhere in the early 2000s, I was dating a gal who was uh, learned with the computers. Mm -hmm. And so she showed me this set up, The Sims, and... Uh, I remember um, a character walking around a house, and I think we made a meal, yeah. and then a fire started, and then we put out the fire, and then the character went to sleep, and I never went back to The Sims. <laughs> that, that was the extent of my Sims experience. And then a number of years ago, whatever, we brought this up, and Wapples telling us all these elaborate murders that he pulled off while playing. It was hilarious. It was, it was very entertaining. Yeah, yours yeah. were like... Very intense. Because he starves only... them to death. Yeah. He drowns yeah. them. Yeah. Locks them in the bathroom. I would make a little tiny room and put just a stove in there with no uh, fire alarm. And See then have it. them be really bad at cooking. Didn't, so you have, but, didn't you have brother and sister characters making babies and things like that? Or is, was that a, a uh, different movie that I watched? No. So the, the Sims now, you can get different mods for the game. And the mods are in, insane. So you can have... Does like, they, do the game makers make them, or is this like a... Uh, just like people can develop the game and change it. Right, the just way. like an average person? Yeah. Yeah, so now you can... Like, there's challenges to have the most babies to try to see if you can have 100 babies. Okay. You can have babies with uh, your sister. It's Nick how, Cannon mode. Yeah, <laughs> see, like, see, like, how young you can be and then have a kid. Oh, my um, God. And, so, then, and then you can even, like, uh, now now when they have woo-hoo, which is yeah. sex, like, you actually see them having sex. Get you out of here. The blur out, the, they're yeah. naked in the shower, actually. The blur's off and oh. everything. Okay, Am I it's misremembering? Because I we played the I want to say we played the first one in school, and <laughs> it was completely innocent. I mean, obviously the school version would be, but could you do that in the original Sims? Maybe you guys are far too young. Yes, I don't. I you don't could, remember being really able could. to have yes. sex. But yep. wait a minute. I thought but, the original Sims was just so uh, gener generic, yeah, basic, uh -huh. and you know it just seemed. So I cool. remember that too. But wait a minute, Wapple, help me out. I know I'm I'm missing something. Didn't you create a love triangle or something in the Sims video game so then one murder one character would murder oh, the yeah. other? Yeah, so <laughs> Oh yeah. How could I have forgotten? Yeah, you could get like so you have relationships with people like in real life. Yes. So you can have someone be like your mortal enemy or whatever. Ah. So then I had one of my characters go after his wife and hit on his wife. So we were having like an affair and that dude would be like watching us. <laughs> and then he'd come over all pissed and he'd be like, hey, I'm going to fight you. And then, you know, like a dust cloud comes. Fighting. Did you ever name any of your characters like the, the ones that were going to be the, you know, murdered after someone you knew? Oh, no. Dude. Oh, that's a good idea. No so you had the angry, jealous husband. <laughs> and then there was a, eventually <laughs> one, one of them killed the other. Yeah. Uh, you're I, great. Think, I think you've answered this question before, but you pick them up, you dropped them. Jesus wants to know, did you ever put piranhas in the pool? No. I thought I you had said you, you had before. No, no you could I, do that. I didn't know you could do uh. that. Maybe, maybe that's one of the mods. But what I would do in Roller Coaster <sighs> Tycoon is if uh, the, the guests would get mad at me and they're like, hey, this park is way too expensive. You could pick the guests up and move <laughs> them around. So I would drop them in a lake and they'd drown. Oh! <laughs> so casual about oh, it. Just because they said your park, what, what the hell is roller coat? We don't have time for this. <laughs> Maybe it was expensive. Waffle. Oh, it probably was. When but... I played Roller Coaster Tycoon, oh, I've never oh. heard anybody say that in my oh, life. I guarantee there's going to be a million texts now. That game is so much fun. I, I, cool. I just opened something mouse up, I bet. <clears throat> okay, I got another question. So, did you, had you heard you could do these things, or you just tried all these evil things? Uh, you, so, you, you did you come up with it and it worked? I, I came up, like, I tried deleting the, the stairs to get out of the pool, and then I was like, oh, that works. And then, you know, you hear from friends, they're playing the game, and they're like, oh, well, I killed my character this way, and you're like, oh, I could try that, or I could do this. That's funny. So in, remember, in a disturbing way. Remember yeah. this conversation, Wapple, next time you try to paint yourself as some innocent character who <laughs> could never, I could never think of killing or I'm hurting just it. Really brutal in video games.
That's how it starts. Mm -hmm. Do you folks, uh, do you use that GPS gimmick when you're trying to go summers you're not familiar with? I sure do. Mm -hmm. It's a cool deal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Sometimes I like to use it just to figure out how long it takes to get from one place to another. That's the most useful. All right, again, this year, next story. It's like a few others we've told before. If you're a criminal, especially if you're going to take your criminal activity out on the road, Why wouldn't you try to be 100% sure what the hell you're doing? Like, say, I would think before you go out on the road, you'd like to make sure everything about your motor vehicle is up to schneid. The tabs, the insurance, lights and signals, you know, every damn thing. If you can't do all that, maybe because of your past criminal record, at least you'd make certain, I would think, you'd make certain you know where the hell you're going. A 60-year-old dude here in the States... He's driving up and down. He's got 400 pounds of cannabis and more than $600,000 in his car. And he's trying to get Summers. He followed his GPS thingy, but he must have punched his destination in sideways because he ended up at the Canadian border, where, of course, they searched the vehicle and found all the monies and all the dope. So long, sucker. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I'd imagine, I've never been to the Canadian border, but there's probably a sign or two, wouldn't there be? Yeah, yeah you they, think? They'd let you know you're coming. <laughs> he didn't have a passport on him. He's at the Canadian. How the hell did I get at the Canadian? Crazy. They search his car, everything gone. He's now in jail in Ontario. Oof. Where I'm guessing he's probably being treated pretty poorly because he's an American, and once again, two American hockey clubs are playing for the cup. They don't like that up in Canada. Canadian authorities will give an American a beaten on sight this time of year when two American clubs are playing for the cup. At least it's two prestigious, you know, clubs with great history behind them in the the Stanley Cup this year. Oh, no doubt. Mm -hmm. No doubt. They're so so entitled in Canada. They they think the Stanley Cup belongs to them when, of course, the Stanley Cup should be won by a Minnesota team. I mean, we are the state of hockey, right? (laughs) I've heard that before. You guys the bumper sticker. Did you see what Ryan Suter did to Kirill Kaprizov in the playoffs? (laughs) (laughs) You ever seen anything like that? But he should be thrown out of the game. Anyway, this dumbass following his GPS all the way to Canada. His name is Andrew. He said his GPS coordinates were entered incorrectly. He mistakenly ended up at the border. And they found all this, like I said, 399 pounds of cannabis. That's worth upwards around 500 grand. Mm. And he had that 600 grand in cash on him as well. What a nightmare. I'd like to know, Wapo, we should try and figure out. Like we, We've done this with Nick with beer and chew. Like your lifetime expenditure on that. How much money you've spent on it. We should try that with you and weed. Oh, boy. I mean, so you you know about how much you use, correct? Yeah. Like, how many pots a day do you do? Well, I mean, that, that'd be tough. To, uh, usually a week, uh, about like 80 bucks. Okay, see, and, and you've been doing that since you were like seven? Mm, yeah, but, it, you know, it wasn't always $80 a week. You know, back in the day, it was here and there. Well, we don't figure but, this out on air, but we should we should try and figure this out. I'd be curious to know how much you've spent. And then I'd like to compare that to the amount you still owe for student loans. Oh, oh great. <laughs> that Is that like information you don't want to know? Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a very depressing day, oh, especially no. now. I remember when my folks once sat down and did the arithmetic on what they spend a year on cigarettes, just on cigarettes. And it was incredible. Yeah, that's another one that would blow my mind. And I too. don't remember what... I don't remember when when we did the total of my beer and this is back when I was younger too. Yes, yeah, a long time and, ago. And then drank a lot more beer than I do now. Yep. When we totaled up what I spend on a, in a year on beer and tobacco, ooh, we it I I remember it it took um, my breath away. You were shocked. Yeah. But you know that's that's living in my opinion. Here's something you don't hear very often. An 80 some year old dope dealer Kind of makes me suspicious of my dad all of a sudden. He, he acts like he's on something. Mm-hmm. Here's an old-timer in Germany. He's 82. Sounds like he's been slinging geef for years and years. He went to court recently for his dope dealing. He avoided prison time, even though it was his 25th conviction. He avoided prison time. The court said this was his very last warning. 
If he Fs up again with the weed deal and they're going to send him away. It doesn't give a name here for old Grandpa Ganj. But they do say he's a retired seaman. (laughs) And they also say he started selling grass because he didn't think he could live on his pension. Prosecutors asked the court to dump this old boy in prison for three years. But the judge was lenient. The judge took into consideration, uh, how do you say that? Consideration? The judge took into consideration the old timer's health problems. Apparently he's not in the greatest health. So they gave him one last warning. Keep an eye on your grandma. Well, Wapolo will keep an eye on your grandma for you. Oh my God. By God, he will. But maybe the old folks, you know, maybe they're dope slingers. I mean, that's interesting that they're just like, okay, dude. Like, We're doing on. our best yeah. not to put you behind bars. Can yeah. you please stop selling weed? He keeps showing up over and over again in court, and they keep giving him opportunities. I wonder if he'll... I kind of view this as an inspirational story. No, it's never too late to chase your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Make a couple of bucks. Hey, what's going to happen to drug dealers or marijuana dealers um, once this is all legal? It's a good question. They, no, they, it'll, are it'll they able still to pivot be cheaper. Quick? Oh, is that what it'll be? It'll it'll just be less expensive? Yeah, a little bit. I imagine so, yeah. But it'll just be so much more convenient just to go to any city. Exactly. Versus calling your uh, plug? Yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, sometimes they they tell you, yeah, it'll be 30 minutes, Mm -hmm. and then it's three hours. Doesn't that mean it's free? Oh, that's pizza. (laughs) It should be. Yeah, they should. If you don't get it in 30 minutes, it's free. Oh, they deliver? No, no, no. no, no. I was talking about my drug dealer. They will be able to... Oh, they're gonna be, you'll be able to get weed delivered to your house now, oh, too? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they do oh, that in the oh, states. It's yeah. legal, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, like DoorDash for weed. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get off my couch. Can you please give me some weed? Imagine what some of those DoorDash <laughs> orders will be. You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to need some weed, five bags of Funyuns. <laughs> some ice cream, bagel bites. I hear you on that. Bagel bites. Boy, that's, what dude. A, great, that's a great poll, dude. Yeah, so he... good. So good. Wobble, you love bagel bites. I love bagel bites. (laughs) Nick needs to try bagel bites. Bagel bites. Never saw it. I'll I'll tell you what, Bagel. You'd like them. You'd like them. I'll tell you this right now. If I would have had kids and something like this would have happened to me as a parent, I can guarantee I'd find out just how far I can throw a 13 year old. A 13 year old girl in China spent around $64,000 of her parents' monies on mobile games this year, which completely wiped out their savings account, and her folks had no idea. Oh. I bet they're wishing you could return a, return a kid at this point. She used her mama debit card. She deleted the chat and transaction records to hide them from her mama. Her mother's name is Gong Yi Wang. She said she learned about the spending spree after receiving a call from a teacher at her daughter's school who was worried that the kid was addicted to pay to play games. Pay to play games. You guys probably know what that means. So when Gong checked her bank account, she realized it was left with a balance of. There was $64,000 in there. You want to know what was left? Seven cents! Oh, oh, she dried that thing out almost completely. Her daughter spent 16 some odd thousand dollars buying game accounts, $30,000 on in-game purchases. She also transferred monies to some of her classmates who wanted to buy game products. No. She's so generous with her parents' money. $64,000. Gong, again, the mommel, she told uh, something called Elephant News over there in China. She said, I never thought a 13-year-old could do this. And this is my favorite line in the story. She said, my head feels like it's going to explode. I can't imagine being in that situation. I mean, I was frustrated that my son woke us up a couple nights ago because he asked us, to guess how old his favorite YouTuber's dog was. That was worth waking us up. <laughs> how old was he? 19. 19? Wow. Yeah. Wow, that is impressive. It is, it is an old dog. But I don't, I don't know that that warrants waking people up. 
for and, and you know yeah. on a work uh, night. I can't wait to have. Can't kids. wait till the morning. That sounds awesome. But that's way better than him wiping out our entire savings account. True. Which wouldn't be as impressive as sixty three thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not stupid news making uh, information. <laughs> Got a text here. Who uh, this person says my wife spent seventeen grand on a mobile game, erased what my son had been saving from his job. Oh. Oof. Now this thirteen year old kid who took all of her mama's money to spend on stupid video. Uh, she said she didn't know where the money come. How do I say this? She linked her mother's debit card to her mobile phone, but didn't know where the money came from or how much she was spending. Okay, but that contradicts what we learned earlier in the story that she was deleting transactions and deleting this and that. What do you mean you don't know? You, you knew. If that was my child, I'd straight up tell her. I'd say, I hate you. <laughs> I hate your guts. You're stupid, and I no longer love you. <laughs> and I never will. <laughs> I never will. My, uh, this text says, my son took my grandma's credit card last week and bought an iPhone 12. Ooh. Oh, that's got to be an uncomfortable conversation with grandma. Mama Gong has reached out to some of these platforms where the games were bought and requested refunds. They haven't gotten back to her yet. They say gaming addiction amongst the young people in China is such a problem that there are internet restrictions on teenagers and children. Teens in China aren't supposed to play video games for more than three hours a week. Oh, I, I remember hearing something about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've discussed that. That, um, I mean, if she can't get refunds, I don't know how good they're going to be about that. I mean, I, what, what do you do? I mean... <laughs> You know, you all your savings is gone. God. Yeah, I, I imagine it would be really hard to get a refund because those companies, they have no way of knowing that it was your kid or that, I don't know. It's, uh... I'd give the child that seven cents that was left in the bank account, give her a, put a backpack on her shoulder and say, there you go, you're on your own. <laughs> you go ahead, live on seven cents. Thanks for ruining my life. I mean, that can be life-ruining. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And finally here, just so you know, and you can share this information with the fellas in the warehouse or whoever you're working with today, maybe radio this back to dispatch or whatever, um, the origins of masturbation have been traced back to the very beginnings. The origins of masturbation have been traced back to primates from over 40 million years ago. Just in case you thought your weird uncle, who back when you were a kid was suddenly no longer invited to Christmas, was the one who invented masturbation, <laughs> it wasn't him. It was monkeys from 40 million, how do you say, uh, years ago. Man, I wish I would have had information like this when I was a uh, beginning masturbator. Oh, dude, you you just due to all, all the guilt. and Yeah, you feel yeah. less guilty about it today? I think I probably right would. If somebody would have said it's okay and mm. it's natural and it's not a sin... I think that would have been a lot better for me, my psyche. You know, Cubby, I, I don't often masturbate, but when I do, I'm usually on a city bus. <laughs> uh, why scientists decided to go ahead and look into this, I have no idea. Make Josh feel better about himself. <laughs> wouldn't that be the case? Yeah. <laughs> or, or, wouldn't that be great? I mean, it's just, These, uh, uh, hey, hey, we got this study you should check out. <laughs> monkeys and apes were touching themselves many, many millions of years. They mention here in the story that zookeepers get to watch animals masturbate all day long. Lucky bastards, huh? I wouldn't want that job. No, I'm out. A lot of this here story is really gross, talking about monkey semen and whatnot. You don't need well, to hear about that, do you? They talk about monkey STDs. I got one of those once. All I wanted to do was eat <laughs> bananas. <laughs> I had a monkey STD. They talk about monkey vaginas here in the story. You don't need that information either. Not, I guess not unless you're looking to skip breakfast. Speaking of monkey vaginas, here's Wapple with today's weather report. Hey, we got a high of 83 today. Mostly cloudy. Tonight's low, 59. Right now, it's currently 64. Sports. On the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. We've got a standoff. Another standoff. We, how about this? What's happening now? We've had the anthem, and now Ramirez grabs the parrot's hat. Now, what if the parrot gets thrown out here, Greg? Do you think he has to leave the entire stadium? You know, I think Tommy Lasorda once had Yuppie thrown out. Montreal Expos old mascot when they were in Montreal. And 
Uh, Lasorda was the manager of the Dodgers. I think he got very angry at something that UP was doing on the Dodger dugout, and he had him ejected. So, yeah, he had to leave the ballpark. Yay, they win. Congrats to the Oakland A's. They win the standoff, and that is that's a big news item. Head announcer, uh, he's, uh, he's correct about Tommy Lasorda getting the Montreal Expos mascot Yuppie thrown out of a ball game many, many years ago. That's hilarious. Yesterday, the Pittsburgh Pirate Parrot mascot even got involved in one of those national anthem standoffs there between <laughs> some members of the Pirates and some members of the Oakland Athletics. But as you heard, the Athletics won the standoff. They haven't done a lot of winning this year. But they won the national anthem standoff yesterday, and it was very exciting. Thanks a lot, Randy or Rosa Ra- Rosanna Dana of the Tampa Bay Rays. Friggin' A. Randy or Rosarena. Rosanna, he donged to lead off the ninth inning, gave the Rays a 2 1 win over the Twins last night. The Twins tied it in the top of the ninth. Pretty rare to see a, a dong given up by Joan Duran. But that's how it played out last night. The uh, Rays walked off the Twins, so they've gone 0 for 2 in this three-game series in Tampa Bay. They'll play again today at noon on BSN. Who are they going to throw up there? The kid with the beard. What's his name again? Bailey Ober going to pitch for the Twins, but that was a heartbreaker last night. In last night's NBA Finals game, damn three, the Denver Nuggets beat the Miami Heat 109-94. There were some historic numbers put up in this ball game. We'll talk about that a little bit later. The Nuggets have taken a two wins to one lead in the series. Check out uh, Game 3 of the Stanley Cup Final Final tonight. Starts at 7 o'clock. You can watch the game on TBS or TNT for some reason. Las Vegas leads the best of seven series, two games to nothing. Tonight they're playing in Florida. The Panthers need this one. By damn, they do. Coming up in a half hour, Randy Shaver will jump on air with us, and so will Vikings long snapper Andrew DePaula, his first appearance live in studio, and we're quite excited about it. Don't go nowhere. My life partner, Josh, is coming up next with his wildly accurate and entertaining news report. tab Ass Morning Show. 69. <laughs> the show fuck. Who are you, fart knockers? 93X. CJ Ham for standard heating and air conditioning. When I'm on the field, I can take anything. But at home with my family, we like everything to be comfortable. That's why I trust the pros at Standard. They've been keeping Minnesotans like me comfortable for over 90 years. Is your cooling system making strange noises or not cooling properly? Don't wait for an AC breakdown this summer. Get a free in-home estimate with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Schedule your appointment today at standardheating.com. An important message from Blue Ridge Hospice. There may be several hospices now claiming to serve the area, but Blue Ridge Hospice is the only local hospice that has been serving here for 40 plus years. Operates the only hospice inpatient care center, conducts the only community wide grief and bereavement programs, offers a nationally recognized music therapy program in conjunction with Shenandoah University, outscores every other Virginia hospice in Medicare's quality scores, and so much more. Blue Ridge Hospice, the first, the best. Find out more at BlueRidgeHospice.org. Half assed morning show 93X. Win two. a pro wrestling legend today, the Iron Sheik. When my dad and the Iron Sheik used to wrestle together, Uncle Sheiky would come over to the house and, and his wife would babysit me. And I was about eight years old at that time and I was a pain in the ass even then. Pro wrestling legend and pop culture fixture, the Iron Sheik, who embraced his role as one of the most notorious villains in the entertainment genre's history, has died at the age of 81. The announcement was made on the wrestler's popular Twitter feed, The Iron Sheik transcended the realm of sports entertainment with his larger-than-life persona and unparalleled in-ring skills that captivated audiences around the globe, the statement said. He's been best known, probably, for his rivalry with Hulk Hogan, a feud largely credited for putting professional wrestling on a global map. His rivalry with Sergeant Slaughter, also a fan favorite. And yesterday, Slaughter talked about his close friend, the Iron Sheik. He loved every second of it. We were just characters that we, we played. We were characters. We were entertainers, and that's what we right. did. But we were the kind of entertainers that if you, you bought a, a ticket to see us, you got your money's worth. Yeah. Love you, Sheik. 
He said he became fast friends with Sheik, and the guys even worked together at his dad's roofing company. He also talked about how the Iron Sheik left to train, uh, left Iran to train in Minnesota. When the uh, Tola took over, he had to get out of there because he was the guard of the uh, Shah, and they, they put out a contract for him, so he, he escaped. But he had that wrestling background, so he went to uh, the States, and uh, finally ended up in Minnesota and got a, a job uh, training the uh, Minnesota uh, Gophers wrestling team and boy they were pretty darn good at that time i would say so the iron sheik found more fame later via twitter twitter where his account used all caps had hilarious commentary on current events and went after hulk hogan a lot <laughs> one tweet read bubba i be honest with you i'd rather be a jabroni browns fan than a low-life hulkamaniac <laughs> So good. His account tweeted an Easter message that read, Happy Easter to all the beautiful people, except that dumb son of a bitch, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> a non-Hogan related tweet simply read, Osmosis, go F yourself. He told Osmosis to F wow. itself. His you gotta have balls for that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I don't remember the last, I don't think I've heard of Osmosis since sixth grade science class. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, and his final tweet before he passed read, F the wildfires. He was posted on Tuesday in reference to the growing Canadian wildfire smoke blanketing the East Coast. The Iron Cheek is survived by his wife of 47 years, his children, and his grandchildren. Again, he passed at the age of 81. He was a beautiful man. Can you imagine, you know, speaking of the old days with the Sheik and Sergeant Slaughter going town to town, can you even imagine the fun those guys had? Yeah. I the bet. effing laughs those uh -huh. guys had. Back in those days. Oh, that was a riot. Oh, yeah. it must have been. To be a fly on the wall and hear some of the stories they tell and see some of the things they do. But Just that was awesome. Playing these arenas, big and small, staying in garbage motels and just having the time of their lives. A 67 year old man was arrested this week after stabbing his roommate with a pair of scissors. On Tuesday at 5.50 a.m., police responded to a group home and found a resident who'd been stabbed in his arm, thigh, and ankle. Ah. According to the resident, he had been stabbed by his roommate, 67-year-old William Vreen, after getting into an argument over Vreen using the bathroom for too long. Mm -hmm. An Oregon man who lost his home in a lawsuit rigged his home with an Indiana Jones-inspired booby trap that injured a federal agent. <laughs> federal prosecutors said after 71-year-old Gregory Rodvelt learned someone had been appointed to sell the property, he proceeded to booby trap it. The bomb squad was asked to inspect the property because the man had previously been arrested and charged with unlawful possession of explosives, and there was a fear there were bombs in there. When they got to the man's former property, they came up to a minivan blocking the front gates. Upon closer inspection, they saw it was rigged with two booby traps. They disarmed those traps and got in the home's front where they spotted a hot tub tilted at an angle. Rodvelt stated that he set up fishing line and tripwire across the property, which went to the hot tub seen on its side, and that was set to roll down a hill and hit whoever came through the oh gate. <laughs> he described it by referencing the stone rolling down in the Indiana Jones movie. The traps included homemade spike strips, a hot tub rigged to roll on anyone who opened a gate, and then a rat trap modified with a shotgun shell connected to the garage door. During a search of the home, a wheelchair was bumped, and that triggered a homemade shotgun gun device that shot an FBI bomb what? technician in the leg. Yes, that bomb technician was injured, rushed to the hospital. He was treated and released. He rigged up a shotgun to go off? Yep. Damn. He faces up to 20 years behind bars. Again, he lost his home in a lawsuit. And so that was uh, what started that whole ordeal. Mm. Well, the new Indiana Jones movie comes out in three weeks. It'll be interesting to see if they have a rigged up uh, hot tub in this one. <laughs> I'd love that. <laughs> A Florida deputy resigned after an internal inve investigation revealed he conducted seven fake traffic stops and allowed a ride-along citizen to view confidential information. The investigation began when a Hernando County Sheriff's Office detective said he heard Deputy McClellan call out a traffic stop after just passing the deputy's location. The detective decided to turn around to back up Deputy McClellan uh, since he was so close by, but he couldn't locate the traffic stop. The detective continued to drive around the immediate area to try and find the stop. Eventually, he did find the patrol car, but it was sitting at the same spot where he originally saw him. During the investigation, it was found that McClellan reportedly conducted seven traffic stops, which didn't actually happen.
He's also accused of allowing a citizen participating in a ride-along to approach a violator's vehicle during a traffic stop and even allowed them to approach the vehicle alone to return the driver's license, registration, and insurance information. And then he was allowed to give a verbal warning, the citizen was, to the driver regarding speed. What the hell's going on here? Hey, I'm going to need you to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy in street clothes. Yeah. McClellan's dash cam had several inconsistencies, including the camera not recording at various times when it was supposed to be. Turns out he had turned it off. Uh, apparently, uh, they also searched his patrol car and found several witness statement forms, which had not been completed and attached to the proper case files. He has resigned. This guy needs a vacation. An Oklahoma man was the victim of an hours-long bee attack last Friday, leaving him with a broken hip and over 200 stingers oh, in his body. No. 81-year-old Carl Amos had been mowing his yard when his family said he was swarmed and attacked by what appeared to be killer bees, an aggressive subspecies also known as Africanized bees. I hit some of them with my hands. You just can't kill them fast enough. It got in my hair, and they were going in my ears, in my nose. I thought, I better keep my mouth shut because they'll be in my mouth. He tried to run from the bees but fell and injured his leg in the process. He said the bees continued to sting him as he lay on the ground for nearly three hours. I would say over a hundred. He had so many on his face and his hands. A lot of the nurses and techs kind of formed together to try to get as many as we could out before we transferred him over to the other campus to where he would have his hip surgery. A man who worked at a business near my, uh, nearby that is discovered Amos and called an ambulance. On social media, his daughter wrote, after all this, he's in good spirits, but it will be a long road to recovery. Wow, that's horrible. Three hours he's getting attacked oh, by the bees. And that sounds absolutely awful. But he laid there for three, because he couldn't get up because of his hip? Yeah, he broke mm -hmm. his hip. So oh, they're just no. eating him alive. Yeah. That's great. They said they pulled at least, they said they're still finding them. They pulled like 200 out, and then they'll all of a sudden find another couple. He's oh. just a whole bee sting, not even a person anymore. That's all that's left. A man who allegedly jumped into an alligator habitat at Bush Gardens has been arrested. There was no sign of animal respect there because if he did, if he understood that if one of those animals would have grabbed him, they would have killed the animal. And I think that's a big part that most people don't understand. He wasn't being shushed at a library. Those, those were the animals right behind him. <laughs> yeah, they were pissed. <laughs> Tampa police said the 23-year-old jumped over a fence unlawfully and entered the enclosure while another subject filmed the event. All right, get back out. Another wild carrot. Like you. It's very social media. He originally jumped into the alligator habitat to film the video. That video was uploaded to social media where investigators tracked him down. He is nothing that anybody should look at. Wow, that was cool. Because that wasn't, that was stupid. Anybody that watched it, now I got to up him. Now I got to get in the water and grab one of them. We will not tolerate this blatant disregard of our safety rules, and we're working with law enforcement on this matter. The safety and well-being of our guests, ambassadors, and animals remain a top priority, the theme park said. The suspect was charged with burglary, theft of service, and trespass. Those were the crocodiles and whatnot hissing at the guy in the yeah, background? Yeah. yeah, it was a bird. <laughs> it was a bird? Yeah. It wasn't a crocodile, then? Not a crocodile. Oh. Bird. What bird. is a crocodile? <laughs> A Texas man allegedly what stole... What the hell was that? Why would you do that? That was a bird. That's a bird. What yeah. kind of bird? Do you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Stop it, dude. <laughs> Someone take the Red Bull away from Wobble. A Texas man allegedly stole women's underwear from multiple homes. Brandon George was arrested by the Huntsville Police Department May 23rd and charged with burglary. In one case, police said the victim reported her underwear and other personal items had been stolen from her bedroom. Police had another incident in the same area helped investigators link George to the latest burglary. When a search warrant was executed, police said he was found to be in possession of several pairs of women's underwear that detectives believed were stolen from different apartments in the area. He also was allegedly seen acting suspiciously near several apartments, possibly lurking outside bedroom windows. Investigators believe there could be other victims in the area who may not know their underwear or personal items were taken. Sure. Ashley, you ever had anybody steal your underwears? Oh, uh, I don't think so. All right. I have so many, it'd be hard to keep track. I mean, do you, you used to throw them out of your window while driving. Has that stopped? <laughs> yeah, that, that has stopped. That yeah. practice has been discontinued? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have disposable income anymore. <laughs> yeah, so you, you can't be throwing those on these. No, out. man. <laughs> Hang on to them for a couple of years. <laughs> The Washington County Sheriff's Office is warning residents of a phone scam involving people impersonating police. 
The agency received multiple reports from residents about callers claiming to be a sergeant who tries to gain financial information or money. In some cases, it appears as if the call is actually coming from our non-emergency dispatch phone number, the sheriff's office said. They're even using real Washington County deputies' names to seem more convincing. The callers allegedly say the person has missed a court date or needs to clear a warrant. Police say while most agencies won't contact you by phone if you have a warrant, none will demand money or personal information <laughs> in an attempt to clear said warrant. <laughs> that sucks. The Minnesota Department of Public Safety sought to bring attention to an increase in 911 missed dials from smartphones and smart watches. While research on the full effects have not been completed, Dakota County officials reported seeing a more than 100% increase, totaling more than 1,000 additional abandoned calls from January 1st to May 31st of this year. Yesterday, the director of the department's emergency communications network said some of the abandoned calls are from pocket dials, emergency SOS features on smartphones and mm -hmm. smartwatches, as well as fall detection, which can be accidentally activated without the owner's knowledge. For Android phones, emergency SOS will initiate after the power button is pressed five times. For iPhones, emergency SOS initiates after the side and volume buttons are held down with a slider appearing to call emergency services. After an accidental call, mm -hmm. officials request the phone not be hung up so the dispatcher knows it was a missed dial, otherwise they'll call back. If that call isn't picked up, a police officer will be sent to the location of the caller. I've done this twice in the last month. <laughs> Did it go through? Uh, yep. The The first time, I didn't notice until like way later, uh, but the second time, I did it at like four in the morning, and they called back and they left a voicemail, and I thought, I'm like, oh, well, they probably already realize it's not an emergency by now, but I called back and uh, the lady that I talked to was like really, really thankful that I actually called and was like, hey, yeah, sorry, I'm not getting murdered. I was just sleeping on my phone. And so they, the cops didn't show up? No. But they uh, were about to send them? You, that's how you accidentally called 911 by sleeping on your phone? What about phone locks and all yeah, that stuff? I, I, don't ha I have my automatic lock off on my phone because it, it makes me mad when I'm trying to look at something and it closes if I don't touch it for well, like a minute. So. Even if your phone's locked, Nick, that's what they're saying is you're either a fall detection on certain devices or oh. you can hit the power button yeah. or a combination of buttons. You know, I had a, I had a wacky 911 call happen that didn't really happen years ago at my house um maybe somebody can uh, text me and because the cop told me this was somewhat common this is 25 years ago i was sound asleep in bed three o'clock in the morning someone's pounding on my damn front door i come out the bedroom and there's a cop peering in my front door and he's got a car parked in my driveway and the roof is lit up and I'm thinking, what the living hell's going on here? Yeah. I came to the door and he said, someone called 911 from this residence? And I said, no. And uh, it was a terrible thunderstorm that night. And he said, okay, it happens. Something about electrical storms. And it was credited to my home phone, not a cell phone. Something about, something about that combination. So he wasn't pissed or upset because he, he led me to believe that, yeah, this happened. There somehow was a 911 call from my home that was never made. Weird. Hamburger chain Slutty Vegan introduced a hot <laughs> new menu item yesterday, mm. hooker fries. The suggestive side dish contains vegan chopped Philly cheesesteak, jalapenos, bell peppers, and caramelized onions served over a bed of the brand's signature Slutty Fries. Fries <laughs> sprinkled with, quote, slut dust. <laughs> <laughs> to complete the dish, it's drizzled with its slut sauce, a spicy vegan mayo, as well as vegan provolone and cheddar cheeses. The company, based in Atlanta, has the slogan, Eat Plants Slut. Other salacious items on its menu include plant-based burgers with naughty names like One Night Stand, Fussy Hussy, Sloppy Toppy, Hollywood Hooker, Side Ho, and super slut. <laughs> Sloppy super toppy, slutty. man. <laughs> I've never heard of the slutty vegan. No. I love it. Uh, we don't have any here. I looked it up. Dang oh. it. <laughs> Check that place out. <laughs> <laughs> Today on Peacock, the season one debut of Based on a True Story, 
A real estate agent, a plumber, and a former tennis star sees a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to cash in on America's obsession with crime and sordid events. Game three of the Stanley Cup Finals tonight on TNT. Vegas leads 2-0. Then on this day, 39 years ago in movie history, both Ghostbusters and Gremlins, a couple of classics, <laughs> debuted on the same day, June 8th of 1984. I remember seeing both of them in the theater, Josh. Did oh, you, you did? Oh, yeah. yeah. Go, Ghostbusters was a riot. Absolute riot. Gremlins was fun, too. Never seen either of the originals of either of those. What? You've never seen the original Ghostbusters or Gremlins? Nope. Oh, you got to watch them. The Gremlins are the ones that aren't supposed to be, like, fed after midnight, midnight or something. No, yeah, those are the what? Ghostbusters. You don't <laughs> feed the Ghostbusters after midnight. <laughs> The gremlins go chasing after. I'm almost jealous of you. You get to experience these for the first time. Oh, that's true. Yeah, check it out. The Godfather, of the Wayans family, Keenan Ivory Wayans, who opened the door for his brothers Damon, Sean, and Marlon, as well as his nephew Damon Jr. He's 65 today. <laughs> Best of luck to rock crusher Jesus going in for urgery. He had the end of his finger torn Ooh. off. Oh. Danger Noodle Jesus wants to wish his brother Mark all the best and a speedy recovery. He's having heart surgery this morning. And B. Chem Jesus sends in a happy birthday to his brother Noah, working at Caterpillar and Osseo. Happy birthday, Rust Bucket, he says. And that's 93X News. Hey, brother and sisterhood, right now on the Luther Bloomington Kia text line, text BRUISE, B-R-U-I-S-E, BRUISE, to 651-989-9393 for a shot to win a four-pack of tickets to the 93X Half-Ass Morning Show Booze Cruise. The Booze Cruise will be happening Friday, June 30th in Stillwater. These tickets are furnished by Stillwater River Boats, sponsored by Anytime Bail Bonds. This keyword is good today, June 8th until midnight. Good luck. Care 11's Randy Shaver. Big time onions. Goodness. On the half-assed morning show. So we'll get a field goal attempt. Trey Williams on the coverage. Vito from 32 for a six-point lead. It's a fake. And it's caught by a touchdown. Oh, the trickery tonight. Andrew DePau to the holder roll. The tight end who released off the line. He's what a quarterback. Th yep. Comes out and has a chance. What a pass. What a throw. What a call. This guy deserves every bit of the, the notoriety and the cool factor that comes with the Pro Bowl. Our long snapper, Andrew DePaul. Yeah! Here we go. This is really fun. And, of course, I'm not talking about Randy Shaver's daily appearance on our program. Who would care, right, Randy boring. Shaver? Boring. Right. <laughs> I'm boring. That's old news. We have a special guest in studio today. Uh, we got to know him over the last Vikings football season, talked to him every week throughout the Vikings season. He gave us some great insight into the ball club, and we and our listeners, in return, gave him a spot on the Pro Bowl roster. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our garbage radio studios for the very first time, Vikings long snapper, Andrew DePaula. Thanks for coming in, Depot. Thanks for having me in studio, guys. So nice to meet you in person. Yeah, yeah. You're even better looking in person, if you don't mind me oh, saying. Stop, and I'm stop. sure you're just ready to say the same thing. <laughs> I am, yeah. You guys look great. Look, go ahead. You guys look great. Oh, there yeah. he is. <laughs> This is really cool, and we're glad to have you. So what the heck's been going on? What are you doing with your off season? Now, are you already doing football practice? Yeah, so we're in the middle of OTAs right now. God dang, the football practice in June, that's got to suck. It's actually not that bad in Minnesota. It ain't that bad? No, not here. Not here. It's 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 been good. It's been real good. Just working out? I mean, what are you, what are you doing day to day? A lot of lifting and running and all that, or are you down, set, hot, and the whole works? We're we're kind of in the whole works, minus all the contact. Um, you know, we're lifting, we're running, and then we get out on the field. We get to run around a little bit, throw the ball around, catch. You're really doing everything but that initial contact with other teammates. It's um, It's been really great work. Now, is this volunteer at this point? Mm -hmm. Right now, it's just all, you know, if you want to be here, come on in. If well, not, why, you don't need to be. Why would, a pro, why would a pro bowler show up for this? <laughs> well, I want to I want to continue to be in that running for pro bowl, so uh, i got to be here. All right. All right. You've been having a fun off season so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been great. I don't know if you guys knew we had our, uh, we had our third child, me and my wife. When Congrats. did that happen? Congrats. That was uh, April 28th she came. I'll be damned. Mm -hmm. So what do you have now? You, your most recent is a daughter. Mm -hmm. Before that, what do you have? A uh, boy, and then our first was a girl. So we have girl, boy, girl. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. you know have you, are you getting any sleep? Uh, I, I'm kind of getting some sleep. My wife, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling the guys early, and girl earlier, um, you get this. How, how old's your oldest? 
She is three. She'll be four in August. Okay. You, you get this to look forward to. My youngest, he's 11. He woke my wife and I up a couple nights ago uh, to ask us to guess how old his favorite YouTuber's dog was. So you get, <laughs> once you get a little older, you can look forward to that as far as lacking sleep for stupid reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Wish you hadn't told me that, but all right. <laughs> all right. The answer's 19, if you were curious. <laughs> Man, is it the middle of the night he woke you up to tell you about his favorite YouTuber's dog? Well, you think like, oh, oh, he's he had a nightmare. He's not feeling well. No, hey, guess how old my favorite YouTuber's dog is. <laughs> Cute. That's interesting. So I, I, I'm trying to think. When's the last time we we talked to you, Andrew? Was it a couple months ago? Right after the season? I, I can't remember. I think it was after free agency. After I signed back. Mm -hmm. Ah, well, yeah, give me a time period. I don't know what that means. March. March. Middle of March. So is any, okay, so between March and now, uh, you had a baby. Mm -hmm. Anything else big going on? Well, how about your business? Yeah, How's how the, about bagel the bagels? Biz? The I bagels. Mean, yeah, we, we had the bagel business last time we talked, and it's been going great. It's been going good. It's, it's been smooth. It's been uh, steady. A um, lot of fun. A lot of headaches. But, you know, it's been great. It's been good. Didn't you recently uh, go ahead and try some uh, softball at a charity game? Oh, yeah, we heard you killed it. I, I don't know if I killed it, but, yeah, the, uh, the Thielen, uh, Thielen charity uh, softball game, that was last week. You yeah. hit a homer, right, at least one? Uh, well, I, I, I won the home run derby. I didn't hit any home runs in the game this time, but um, I think I just kind of wasted all my energy on the derby. <laughs> you know, you're the second Minnesota Viking who's a regular member of the program who has won a home run derby. Right. Also part of the uh, kicking team. Special teams players yeah. are the best athletes on the field. We've said it before. It's Agreed. true. Agreed. Former punter Chris Cluey mm -hmm. showed up at a, a, a charity softball game. Randy Shaver, this must have been 12, 13 some odd years ago. Yep. And he took on an NHL player. Mark Parrish, and uh, Cluey defeated Parrish in that home run derby. There's something about special teams athletes that uh, that shine uh, when the uh, you know, shine in big moments. Absolutely. We're well, right we're, about that. we're well rounded. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Ha, ha, did, did you play any baseball as a kid? I can't remember what kind of an athlete you were in high school and whatnot. Yeah, I played baseball as a kid growing up. Um, so it was no big deal to go out there and swing a bat. It, no, it was a big deal. It was, it was a big deal. A big I haven't, haven't done that since the last softball game last year. So Who yeah. did you beat? Who were you competing against? Oh, in the final round, it was uh, KJ again. KJ won the derby last year. Mm. Osborne? Was, uh, yep. Okay. It was Theo Jackson. And uh, Sam Schluter, a new offensive lineman we just signed this yeah, offseason. Out of Mayor, Minnesota. Yep, Minnesota guy. Oh. Mm -hmm. I was actually just reading about with these OTAs going on, you called them. Mm -hmm. uh, the athletes, you know, the, 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 the players uh, are back in, you know, the, the cities that they play in. Like, say, Jalen Suggs is back in Philadelphia. He's done with, you know, wherever he's from. He's done with vacation. They're back in there in their, uh, you know, their ball club cities, and they're being invited to show up and and uh, and swing the bats at uh, the major league ballparks. Um, Jalen Hurts was doing batting practice for the Phillies the other day, and he was, well, they, they said his swing was a little challenged. Um, Josh Allen looked pretty good swinging the bat for, uh, uh, I think they, they brought him up to Toronto to do some batting practice with the Blue Jays. Uh, Joe Burrow looked pretty good swinging a bat in Cincinnati, but they said the uh, the football player with the best swing that they've seen so far as they're swinging by and taking batting practice at these big league ball clubs, uh, the best swing so far, A.J. Brown. Is he a wide receiver for the Eagles? Yes. A.J. Brown has the best looking swing. Wow, I believe that. Yeah. Yours, you think, uh, it's pretty uh, pretty textbook? Yeah, I guess I, I guess they haven't seen it yet, but... Um... But yeah, mine's, mine's, I guess mine would be up there with A.J. Brown. You think you'd do good at batting practice with the, you know, the, the pitching coach throwing? I don't know. What, <laughs> what, are the, what are they throwing batting practice, Randy? 65, maybe? 55? If that. If yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So you think even with a baseball, you could you still rip it pretty good? I'd like to try. That'd be good to like see. To try. Yeah, try to get the, uh, be fun. get the seats there at Target Field if you got the invite. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, uh, it's just it's it's cool to have. Oh, speaking of Josh Allen, he's going to be the latest uh, athlete on the cover of Madden NFL 24. Yeah, we were just came out yesterday. We were mm -hmm. talking about that a couple of days ago, weren't we, Randy? Yes, we were. Who was going to be on the cover of Madden NFL 24? It ended up being Josh Allen. He says it's like a dream come true. 
Oh, it's uh, a dream come true for Dana. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The loves- trailer is on 93x.com. It's pretty cool. The trailer for the video game? Yeah. Yeah, the uh, debut. Is that something you would ever get involved in, Andrew, playing a little Madden? I, I honestly, I have, I haven't played Madden in years. Yeah. And I'm so bad at video games. Um, no. <laughs> have you seen what you look like? I mean, have you ever had that curiosity at all? No, actually, I haven't. I, I'm, I'm a little curious. Because, um, like, long snappers really just, like, they've come around to being, like, a position, like, not just yes. in the game, but, like, also being recognized by the league. So, like, I'm sure we're last on their list of, like, faces that they need to get. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see if we can find it online. Yeah, I look see. it up. Oh, man. Look up Andrew DePaula, Madden. See what you come up with in uh, Google Images. We want to see. There's going to be quite the bulge if they want to make it realistic. <laughs> They're going to make it accurate. <laughs> so you're bad at video games. Me too. I mean, I haven't played them in so long. Can you think of one that uh, that took up a lot of your time when you were a younger person, or even as an adult? Uh, Mario Kart when I was a kid oh, on N64. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, there you go. I tried to play a little GoldenEye, but like, I always get like, like. Scared. In you get games, scared. You know, like I'm actually going to get shot through the, through the video game. So <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. You know, that's one that that was a big time time suck for me years and years ago was uh, GoldenEye. Mm-hmm. And then Dana over there found me. What's the system, Dana? Nintendo 64. He found me an old Nintendo 64. Or was it yours? I uh, know it was an extra one I had laying around. He had an extra one, <laughs> so it was yours. Well, yeah, yes. but I mean, it, it wasn't like it wasn't one I was that was in use or anything. It's not like I gave you my one and only. Okay, but isn't it interesting that it's kind of like uh, what's that Dumb and Dumber scene with the extra gloves? Yeah. Dana had an extra <laughs> Nintendo 64, and he found me the Golden Eye game, and I got right uh, that. That's a great one. That's nostalgia right there. Yeah. Is it so? I mean, does it work? Did you fire it up? Yeah, yeah. It's terrific. Nice. I just found your uh, Madden rating on mm-hmm. on Madden. Andrew. Madden rating. Yeah, Let's hear it. The Give player it rating, because a lot of people, a lot of players get upset about this. They're like, yes, how, they do. how mm-hmm. come this guy's faster than me? And how come I'm only an 80? Wait, they, wait. Do, well, guess before you tell him. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what do you think you should be? I mean, I, is it relative to the position or relative to the other players on the field? <laughs> <laughs> So they break it down in a lot of different ways. Yeah, they, they break it down between defense, blocking, kicking, overall, general, passing, receiving, and ball carrying. But there is a general. There is a general. Just, yes. but but even for a long snapper, they they include things like pass catching and and running. And yeah, things. I mean it, it, that's it, not fair. Because you're not, not at all. You're not asked to do any of those things. Who knows how good you would be if you were asked to do any of those? Look at all these categories, Nick. There's what? a ton. You're ranked in in a lot of different this ways. This is in point that back at me. That all those different. Look at all that. Well, they they probably even have like a catching stat. You know? Yeah, how they do. Good... They have ball carrier it's, ratings. So how would they even know that? <laughs> he right. doesn't really catch. I'm gonna, so yeah, we can run down the things they call. They say you're the best at and the worst at. All right. So take a guess at your overall rating. I, I'm. I mean, my over. My guess is going to be like a forty-eight, forty-nine. Dude. Whoa. <laughs> tell them. Tell them. You're forty-eight. What? I, I'm looking at 77. Oh. What year are you looking at? Because his, his overall rating is 48. His general rating is 77. There's a difference there? Wait, what's the difference between general and overall? <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, I thought the general was what we were looking at. Because I'll take, we'll say 77. Let's yeah, that let's right now. <laughs> Here's what they say. This, this is where you rank the highest. You have an 82 in agility. Mm. Okay. Wow, there we go. An 82 in awareness. An 80 in jumping and a 100 in personality. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love that. What do you think about being an 82 in agility? You seem to chuckle at that one a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't really get to show off my agility on the field. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be, see, the, here's the thing is you have to be agile, I think, just to do what you do, yeah. basically. Well, you have right? to be agile. You're you're agile with your head between your legs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, not a, pe- a lot of people can't do what you no. do like that. Mm-hmm. So, what else was there? Jumping. Uh, jumping was a high score. Yeah, he got an eighty in jumping. Can you jump high, Andrew? I used to be able to. I wonder so- if they <laughs> got that from the combine. Combine. Oh, oh. From his combine oh, yeah. numbers. Oh. And I I wonder when they they did. Oh, I see the where the rating you found. Uh, What's your name? Dana. Dana, yeah. Um, I wonder if they did this before last year, you know, before you were a pro bowler. 
some of these rankings. I'm going to guess mm-hmm. this is before that. So on, on defense, they give you a 62 for tackling, mm. 44 for power moves. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <is that? laughs> what? There's also finesse moves in there, block shedding. You got a 55 in block shedding. Josh's power move in back pers- in the day was we'd walk up to women and say, have you heard me on the radio? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's, that's a lack of power move. <laughs> Pursuit, 62. Okay. It's just all this is silliness, isn't it, Andrew? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what half of those constitute. Like, what is like, I don't, like block shedding? Block shedding. I, I was hoping that I didn't want to say that I didn't know in case you would make fun of me. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't. If it is what I think Shouldn't it is, it be well, shedding? Not, it's like a it's, swim I'm not even doing that. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. the one blocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's like a defensive player trying to shed a block to right. make a tackle. Right, but Andrew doesn't yeah. even do that. Right. Yeah, that, that, that's under. <laughs> they, I don't know how they rank you as a defensive player here. Let's it, see your throws under pressure. <laughs> you got a ten on that. <laughs> oh, nice! Yeah. Hey, it's not zero. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you guys showed you played the clip from college. Yeah, I think that was a pretty be pressure throw. <laughs> you did. You threw that uh, yeah. that touchdown pass back in college. That yeah, should have been higher. You're right. Friggin' Madden, Randy. You're going to be on this as soon as it's for sale, aren't you? Uh probably not, but. I, I did buy the last Madden yeah. just for fun, um, and it's great. I, I do love the game, but it is I'm fun. Not, I'm more of a baseball guy when it comes to the video games. So. Okay, you got a 76 for speed, 74 for acceleration. That's pretty good. Toughness mm-hmm. 72, stamina 71. Ooh, stamina. Uh, and I'm guessing they're what they mean by injury is you're not injury prone. They put That's you at a cool. 90. Okay. Oh, okay. nice. Unbelievable. Love they, that. they go through all of these different things for each and every player. And, I mean, we're barely getting through these. There's so many. Do you do you guys ever think that, that these numbers are, like, sort of kind of like a marketing gimmick? Like, hey, buy the game and find out, like, what your favorite player's Jesus. throw power is. Maybe it is. And oh, then, I like, wonder. they talk about it more because they're like, oh, my gosh, it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Just to generate buzz on the game. Yeah. I forgot who brought it up. Somebody mentioned it, but uh, they're right. I've With Hard Knocks, you see when the Madden guys come out and evaluate, some of the players get kind of ticked off. Mm. I think there's no way I'm that. I deserve to be higher in this or that. And they said the right. players have offered to bribe them, too, before. Are you serious? No way. Uh-huh. It's a little extreme. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they want to be better than that running back or, the, you know, the rival. They, they want to be better than that quarterback and stuff like that. They, I'd take they, a bribe. They, they take it that seriously. <laughs> well, you know. Too, absolutely. 100%. The younger guys, Andrew, the younger guys grew up obsessed with this kind of thing. And, you know, you know 22, 23-year-old guys playing in the NFL, they've, they've always been into this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, the older guys aren't too concerned about it, I don't think. But it, it, and, and tell me if I'm wrong now. It, isn't there some kind of technology now when it comes to Madden, the video game, where during the season, your numbers can be... Yes, they can be altered. Altered mm-hmm. by your performance. That's correct. That's correct. I mean, you can play the Madden game even... Well, I'm, I'm sure all the games, because I know the baseball will update a player's abilities if they're... like. A, Good example, Luis Arise, who's having you know an incredible season right now, sure. batting over 400. Um, every time you fire that game up, it will uh, take a moment to reset itself mm-hmm. and update <laughs> a player's abilities. So yes, it can change. We were talking about a game earlier, Andrew DePaula, called Sims. Did you ever play Sims? Where no. you create? Okay, no. Wapple over there Uh-oh. across the board from you. <laughs> yeah. Little Muppet-looking some bitch with the ball cap on. <laughs> He's a violent, sick, sick person when he plays Sims. It He's is sick. Murderous, murderous. Tell Andrew some of the ways that you've uh, murdered some of your Sims. Do you characters. even do you even know what that game is, Andrew? I just I always thought it was just like life but just like yeah. in a video game that's right. what i thought too kind of innocent you know yeah. just maybe yeah. a little boring so. yeah but wapple spent his time killing characters in, in horrible horrible <laughs> yeah, ways so you, you can like make a house and a family and stuff like that so if you would build the pool you could make them jump in the pool and they'd be swimming around having a lot of fun but then you could pause the game and delete the the railing, what they would use to get out of the pool. Sure. So then they're just constantly <laughs> swimming around, <laughs> swimming around. Boy, I'm getting tired. There's no way to get out of this pool. And then they eventually die. Did you see the look the Polly just gave us? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Depot turned his head almost 360. Well, you put me. You put me in the room with him. <laughs>
and he's casually <laughs> describing it. Like, we don't want to like, be in the room with him. <laughs> that's nothing. It's just sick, demented stuff. The, yeah. the, the stove one is the one that's most concerning to me. Okay, so then you could build... <laughs> 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 I'm so excited. <laughs> you could build a kitchen, put just like a stove in there, and then not put a fire alarm. Have your person be really bad at cooking, so then they just start everything on fire and they die that way. <laughs> <laughs> the enthusiasm you have describing this is I know. concerning. He, he's, he's very, he's very yeah. excited by virtual death. Yep. Yeah, I like video games. <laughs> digital, uh, digital crystal has texted in, and he's comparing, you know, these different stats for athletes like Andrew DePaula in the Madden video game. He says, hearing these different stats, it reminds him of a buddy of his who used to talk about his Dungeons and Dragons characters' stats. Did you guys ever get into that? No. Oh. Okay. No. I guess when you play Dungeons and Dragons, a char- I remember a little I bit about the movie that just came out. I thought it was pretty good. Actually. Your character was rated for his skills in whatever. What do you do? Swing swords at each other and whatnot? Anyway, I think that is a comparable. They are comparable to talk about all these football stats and your dungeons and dress. Uh, you been watching any ball games on television? You keeping up with the hockey or basketball, Andrew DePaula? Just from the highlights. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just, just from the highlights. All right. NBA Finals game damn three last night. Randy Shaver, the Nuggets beat the Miami Heat by, uh, oh, quite a bit. 109-94. So the Nuggets have taken a two wins to one lead in the series. Historic oh. numbers put up by Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murrah. Right. Well, we were talking about how important this game three was for Denver because you, you go into Miami, Miami gr- grabs some of that momentum after winning game two in Denver. Um, and last night, Denver just, I mean, second half just throttled them. I mean, just played strong the entire way. And Miami just never really got into a groove last night. They looked uh, tired. They looked... They, uh... they did. Butler talked about how they... They lacked energy, and again, it, you, you sit here and you go, how can you lack energy in a Game 3 of the NBA Finals? But somehow they did, and it, it bit them last night. So Denver has a chance to take Game 4. It'll be over at that point. I, I think it's over anyway. I think Denver's, to me, Denver is clearly the better team, but stranger things have happened, so we'll see. Here's the numbers I was talking about. Jokic finished with 32 points, 21 rebounds, and 10 Gosh, assists. The guy is just absolutely the best player in the NBA. Murrah, 34 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. It's the first time two teammates have each messed around and got a triple-double in the same NBA a Finals po- game. A 30-point triple-double, I think, is the distinction, isn't it? Uh, it, it, it? It gets confusing. Yeah, I think it's a 30-point Triple double is the first time it's ever happened in the NBA Finals. The thirty-point triple double is the first time Randy Shaver it's happened in any NBA game. Oh, really? Yes. For teammates. Oh yes. my gosh. For okay. teammates. So it's 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 a hell of a deal. Hell of wow. a deal. Yeah. Um, you know the the strategy, Nick, is that Mike Malone has said. I don't. Th- Maybe I'm wrong. Did Jokic even leave the floor in the second half last night? Don't know. I, th- I think he played the entire second half. And I think that's what Malone said before the game, that he was going to play both Murray and Jokic for as many minutes as they could play. I don't I don't have it right in front of me, but I've, I'm, I'll bet you their minutes are at 45, 44 something like that probably if that's what he was saying he was going to do so i mean you know it kind of makes sense you're you know there's no more series after this one so you might as well play these guys if they want to win as bad as you do so they they'll they don't want to come out they want to play so our guest in studio here andrew DePaula on the half fast morning show uh, Andrew, you a fan of uh, Pete Davidson, the uh, stand-up comic, whatever he does for a living? I'm not entirely sure. Pete Davidson? I can't say that I'm a fan. Oh uh, no? No, I mean I don't. I don't really know. I haven't really seen any of his his stuff. Yeah, me neither. His new uh, his new TV show on I think it's Peacock. That is really good. Um, I Love think Kiss? Yes, that absolutely amazing. Yeah, I've I've seen him on television commercials, and, and there's usually an online story about the latest supermodel that he's folding in half. But other than that, I don't know what uh, 
Pete Davidson does. But anyway, there was video of him playing basketball the other day. Did you guys watch this video? Mm, yeah. yeah did not. This guy looks like he can play basketball. Yeah. It's up on 93x.com, too. See if you want to check that out, everybody. Uh, people were shocked to see that this guy could play. He was very good. He looked very natural at it. Kind of what happened with that Bieber dude. Oh, with the yeah. hockey? And basketball. And basketball. Yeah, uh, Pete Davidson's tall, right? I mean, he's like yeah, six foot. Yeah, he looks that way. He looked like a tall guy. He was playing basketball against the UNLV basketball team. But same thing with Bieber. I watched him play in some charity basketball game. I thought, damn. So, uh... Check that out. Pete Davidson, apparently his sister played college basketball. She knows what she's doing. What about hockey, Andrew DePaula? Uh, Stanley Cup Finals. You watching the highlights of that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did, did I you, enjoy did, hockey. You do? Mm -hmm. Did you do any skating when you were a young person? I tried. What was tried. that like? Not great. You okay. <laughs> <laughs> played football. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Tonight, we got game three of the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, playing in Florida this time. Florida Panthers are at home. Uh, Las Vegas has a two games to none lead in the series. TBS or TNT, you can see the game tonight at 7. I think it's at 7 o'clock. Panthers need a win. By God, they do. Vegas has been good since they started, right? Since and they that's got something. The <laughs> yeah. It is amazing. That's pretty cool. Second, uh, second uh, how do you want to call Trips it? To the Stanley Cup Trip finals. to the Cup in six yeah. or seven years. Wow. Six or seven years. I don't know. I mean, yeah, they, like I said a long time ago, uh, they look like they look like the they're just bigger and better than everybody else out there. So I'd love to see the Florida Panthers make a comeback. Really would, but uh, we'll see tonight. Oh, we didn't even talk about the Twins. We forgot to talk about the Twins. Um, speaking of Tampa Bay, yeah, friggin' walk off win for the Rays last night. Yeah, wasted a great Lopez effort last night, unfortunately. Uh, Walk-off, home run hit by Randy Arozarena. Is that how you say yep, it? Yep, Arozarena. Randy yep. Arosa walk-off, home run. The Twins had tied it in the top of the ninth. Off of Duran, too. So, yes. I mean, whew. That's pretty pretty impressive. So they tie it in the top of the ninth. Randy uh, Arozarena steps up. You know, it's an First batter those... in the bottom of the ninth. He hits it yep. out, of the, out of the park. Yes, Randy. It's, it's, it's one of those things, again, I mean... You know, what's what each team is known for so far this season played out again last night. Tampa Bay does their their uh, you know, decides to do a, a a bullpen game. Their pitchers hold the twins to three hits. The twins again struggle at the plate last night. They strike out nine times. And Tampa Bay doesn't they just score enough to win games. They don't overpower teams normally. And their pitching is just lights out. And, you know, whether it's their starters or their bullpen, their pitching is just phenomenal. And that showed itself again last night. They are 45-19 and 19 to start the season. And the Twins, now no team in the division for the Twins is over 500. They're all, there's no winning team. Yeah, Twins in, are a 500 team division. now. Yeah. 31-31. and 31. They'll play again today at noon and uh, Bailey Ober is going to pitch. So what else is going on, Andrew DePaula? What are you doing uh, with your free time now that you're back in Minnesota? Just trying to enjoy Minnesota as much as I can. Been playing a decent amount of golf. Ah, he was golf. out there on Monday. Played in my oh, event. Oh, right. right. I forgot. That's right. Yeah. You yeah. played in, played in uh, Randy Shaver's thing on Monday. Yeah, that was a great time. That was a great time. Great course. Uh, great people. Just fantastic. Who, were the, uh, who was the group that you got aligned with? He was with the yep. uh, the guys from Medina Entertainment. Oh, Center. from Medina? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. The Rascop guys? Yep, that's correct. Yeah, no kidding. He with, yep. He was with one of the brothers out there. They were a lot of fun. They were a lot See, of fun. See, I'll tell you what, uh, Andrew DePaula, I've been going to that place since I was a young, young kid. I know the yeah. Medina Entertainment Center very well. I don't really, uh, I hope that they're not listening, but when I was a kid, I used to steal the bowling shoes out of there all the time. <laughs> 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 oh, man. I was asking him about it. It's it's hard to picture a 60,000 square foot entertainment center. Like, I was trying to picture it, and he it's, was describing it to me. But It's uh, massive, it's, Andy. Yeah, it sounds yeah. massive. It, it, and it's it, their ballroom where they play, have their concerts, where I have my event, mm -hmm. uh, is, is, 
it's bigger than you would imagine, right, Nick? Oh, I yeah. Mean, it, 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 and it's, uh, it really is a great venue. I love that place. It really is a great I place. I hope it never changes. It's got a bowling alley. It's got a restaurant. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, it's pretty cool. I still love going up and uh, seeing bands up in the ballroom. So how did you golf? Did, decent? I mean, it was a scramble, so yeah. I mean, I think I played pretty pretty well. Our group was good. I heard he was pretty good. Yeah. Did uh, did anyone, did Randy or anyone else call attention to the pond that Randy drove his golf cart into? Did they? Now he missed that hole, by the way. Oh, you didn't play that. Yeah, he got out. uh, Andrew got out there a little bit late, so he did not play. I I assume he didn't play one or two, right? Uh, Yeah, I missed the first two. I got on. I got there on three. So he missed the he missed the pond, which is at the number one green, number two uh, tee box. Is that permanently marked now? It yeah. is. Mm-hmm. That's yes, hilarious. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate is there plaque? It. There's what? a sign there. Yeah. What happened at the uh, What happened with the pond? I drove a I drove a cart in the pond. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. With with a with a cameraman with me, and we had to scramble to save the. Hundred thousand dollar TV camera. Christ, did, you had did, to save yourself. I, yes, I did because yeah. I can't swim very well. Did they get it on camera? <laughs> oh no, it wasn't on camera, but it oh, didn't okay. need to be. Many people took pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd never heard that story, huh, Andrew? No. Yeah. It's one of the best things that have has ever happened to us for sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. to us. <laughs> and you know, Randy drove me out to the third hole. So. Oh. No. I don't know if I'd have, if I'd had this information beforehand, maybe I would have asked for a. You know, a you're going to want nothing to do with any of us. We put yeah. you in the room with a video game serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> you had the wrong person driving you around a golf cart. Of course, that is. We put you at risk by riding in a golf cart with a guy who damn near drowned while driving one <laughs> yeah. a few years ago. Mm-hmm. So you had a good time golfing, huh? Mm-hmm. It's great. It was great. A lot of fun. That's outstanding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I tried it once. I suck at golf. And boy, did I feel like I ripped off the people who golfed with me. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they're paired up with all these pro, you know, pro bowlers like yourself, some Hall of Famers out there, Randy. Yeah. And one year, you must have been short of, you were short on people. Celebrities? Don't, I, the, the word disgusts me, but yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> and you paired me up with these guys, and I sucked at golf. Yeah, I just said uh, him. Yeah, but you know what? It's like Andrew said. It's a scramble. So everybody, you can contribute a lot or a little, and it really doesn't matter. At least at my event, it really doesn't really doesn't matter. It's more about just having fun. There's, there's so much to do and eat. and mm-hmm. You know, it's just the golf is almost secondary sometimes to, to what's going on out there. So. I was just about to say, the golf wasn't even, like, it was just, it was hanging with the people, talking, getting to know everybody on every hole that was sponsoring the hole. I mean, it was, it was, it was an event, to say the least. It was a great time. They do a good job, they for do sure. An and, awesome job. And you got to get going here pretty soon. You got to go to practice today, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. There. What, what are you up against today? Anything uh, specific? I'll probably find out when I get there. Yeah. Hopefully I haven't missed that part yet, but, um. So do you actually practice your snapping during this time, or is it this more just getting kind of back into football condition, lifting, running? Kind it's of thing? kind for of you, all, all for of that. You. It's kind of, well, for me, it's, it's a little bit of all of that. So like getting back into like football shape, getting those little muscles tuned and primed up and ready to go for training camp. And then, you know, I am snapping. So we're okay. snapping punts, we're snapping field goals. I'm getting all that honed and dialed in. I'm not, I don't want to be you know, at 100% just right. yet. You know, I want right. to kind of just gradually increase and get there through camp. Um, but there are certain things that I try and work on, you know, every day, whether that be lifting, running, or snapping. I have, like, a goal in mind of something that I'm trying to get better at. Are there sure. any particular exercises that you dread, that you just hate? Ah, we're doing this today. Mm, not anymore, uh, just because I know, you know, I'm getting better from it. Um, you know, there might be like a certain running drill that I'm like not looking forward to. <laughs> but as far as like practice and anything that you know on the field, there's nothing I really say that. Does I it does doing. it get tougher every year you come back? Because you're not a, you're not a young guy, football terms anymore. By you're comparison, a, you're, you're, to yeah, you're a veteran guy now. So does it get harder? I, I wouldn't say it gets harder. I just, may, I mean, maybe, maybe. I, mean, I just I just know like the the young guys when they come in. They are so like amped up and primed and ready to go. And you got to remember, they've been they've been going from their college season right into training for right. the combine. Mm-hmm. And then so they're tuned up. I mean, they're ready to go. They're they're looking good. <laughs> Whereas me, I'm I'm coming off you know like a three four month 
vacation and it's like, hey guys, slow it. Chill, <laughs> 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 guys. This is voluntary workouts, guys. We don't, like, let's <laughs> wait till we get the pads on and then we'll see how gung ho you are. But like for now, just chill. Just slow. But how uh, have things? Ch uh, do things change once you uh, once you make the Pro Bowl? I mean, do you at least have uh, Pro Bowl parking at the practice facility or anything special <laughs> like that? No, no. Well, I don't. I don't. Maybe maybe JJ does or somebody else. But you're not hazing any of the rookies or anything like that. <laughs> no. You can carry your uh, equipment or anything. No, you uh, you really can't do that stuff anymore. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. No. <laughs> what about the uh, just the, the like the rookies buying dinners? Can you do that stuff still or? Is that out as well? I mean, you, you can, but that you usually wait until the rookies like make the team and they got some money in their pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Make it cruel otherwise. Yeah. And I mean, I guess now with the whole college NIL stuff, we yeah, they do have really? some money in their pocket. But oh, um, but uh, but no, yeah, we, no we try and be nice and, and wait a little while. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you, you do it now, you're just getting gas station hot dogs. All right, we're not inviting any <laughs> offensive linemen. <Yeah. laughs> we know you got to get going, Andrew. We don't want to make you late for practice, but we really appreciate you coming in. Meeting you in person has been great, and, awesome. and you've been a wonderful addition to our program. We look forward to talking to you again, and especially once the football season starts, talking to you every week. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. This was really cool. I really enjoyed being in here seeing all this uh, I'd rather just do the, the, the show from in here. This is great. The sound quality is awesome. I'm not like, there's no lag, but it's just, this is awesome. Well, you always, I probably doesn't work out with your schedule, but if we can find a day during during the week that works better for you, for sure. Yeah, well, you could be at studio. home or something. You could yeah. retire and just come in studio. <laughs> nope, not, not ready for that. I got another kid, so I got a <laughs> bills to pay for. Oh, but we got lots of money here at the radio station Heck to go yeah. around. You should check out the parking lot, man. Ooh. There's evidence out there. There's lots of money to go around in radio. Did you see the duct tape and bungee cords holding down Ashley's hood? I oh, know. I, I missed that. I missed that. <laughs> yeah, that is that is one vehicle that is unsafe to drive. But what are you going to do? It's rough. Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> Can't walk to work. It's probably paid off. Thanks. Yes, it is. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Andrew, thanks again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Good Talk to see you, man. Soon. Long snapper Andrew DePaula, his first visit to the radio station. He was thrilled to see all of our expensive equipment. And we hope to talk to him again soon. Randy Shaver, you know, earlier we spent quite a bit of time talking about the passing of the one and only oh, Iron, Iron Sheik. Sheik. Yeah. Yes, we did. WWE legend, hell, a legend that goes beyond wrestling. Yeah. The Iron Sheik passed away. What a sad, sad day. Yesterday, if I didn't mention, 81 years old. Yeah. This is a guy, Randy Shaver, whose best man at his wedding was Mean Gene Okerlund. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, life was not all that kind to the Iron Sheik at times. When he was young, he grew up in the middle of nowhere with no running water. Narrowly escaped Iran to come to America. Uh, started with nothing. Started as a coach, coached at the U of M, met Vern Gagne, and at that point everything changed. Um, but still, his post-wrestling life was not easy. There were drug problems, there were tragedies in his life. But, tell you what, I think overall the Iron Sheik, he won. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He yep. won. I agree. And became maybe the greatest heel that wrestling has ever seen. And just... Like I said earlier, Josh, when we first started the show, it's almost overwhelming to try and sum up this man's life, what he meant to wrestling, what he meant right. to wrestling fans, his impact on the sport. Yeah, you're right. It, you know, we mentioned there's a couple of different programs you can stream now, um, documentaries about the Iron Cheek, and it, it's hard to believe that's just one guy they're talking about with how he started. And we were discussing this, too. He wasn't 30 Excuse me, it wasn't until he was 30 before he started becoming a professional wrestler. Yeah. You know, he, he did the Greco stuff in Iran. He was in the military. He was a bodyguard. And then they put a hit out him, on him in Iran, and he has to flee to the States. And luckily for us, he comes here to Minnesota. Comes to Minnesota, marries a Minnesota lady. She survives him. Uh, they've been married for, what, 16? It was 47 years. Four, oh, God, 47 yeah. I mean, look, look, like yourself, Randy Shaver, you're not the biggest wrestling fan in the world, but if I asked you to rattle oh. off a top ten, I know you would include. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. We're the talking... fact that I'm, I'm just visually thinking about, you know, when you mentioned Vern, 
you know, he had that facility out there in Mound where he would bring all these wrestlers. He'd teach them how to be wrestlers, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. That was, and I, I had the pleasure of going out there when Brad Rangans was uh, in. A, uh, I was doing an Olympic look back, and Brad Rangans brought me out there mm-hmm. to show the facility and how they trained young wrestlers, kind of like a like a big pole barn. They had like mm-hmm. a, a ring in the pole barn, right? And they would practice out there, and uh, so I'm just visualizing what that must have looked like for him to go out there and train with Vern Gagne and all his guys to get him ready to be a wrestler. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we've had a lot of listeners text in about the passing of the Iron Sheik, and a lot of them have been saying the same thing. Hey, Hulkamania probably wouldn't have been Hulkamania without the Iron Sheik. He was the perfect heel, Mm -hmm. the perfect heel at the perfect time, you know, and his true Iranian roots and his true broken English, you know, made that character so perfect. Uh, we were joking around earlier. Josh played some audio of Sergeant Slaughter commenting on the death of the Iron Sheik. And we just for a minute stepped back and said, can you imagine the laughs and the hell raising and the fun that those guys had in the 80s? The Sheik, Slaughter, that group uh, of WWE, it must have been insane. And then, of course, the really bizarre twist to this guy's life is... He's got drug problems. He's got terrible things happening in his life throughout the 90s and into the 2000s. And then Twitter comes along. And some younger family members came up with this Iron Sheik Twitter page where they, it wasn't so much the Sheik on Twitter as it was these younger people, but they, you know, knowing the Sheik and knowing his his profile, they they raise it. Yeah, people. Mm now figure out who he is and what he did and yeah it was pretty cool Ashley didn't know he was a real wrestler she yeah. knew him from the Twitter account <laughs> yep I actually it was maybe like a month or two ago I reposted one of his tweets and I was like why does that guy always seem so mad I love him because <laughs> it's always caps and he's always telling yeah telling uh, Hogan to F off oh, he so. hates Hogan he, he hates, hates Hogan, Hogan. <laughs> I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that was even his whole gimmick was to hate him. So people discovered or rediscovered the Iron Sheik once yeah. he got on Twitter. It, just a great story. And, and, and appropriately enough, Twitter blew up yesterday at his passing. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of, that's where I first saw it. Uh, there was a lot of uh, reaction on Twitter yesterday. There you go. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. I don't think you I got missed. it all covered. Covered it for you. Hell of a deal. All right, Randy, thanks very much. Tomorrow we'll try to load up a dad fight for you and Brad Ryder. Oh, boy, I've got a streak going, too, don't I? You do. I, no one cares. Do you? <laughs> I don't. What is the streak? I, I'll pull it up quick. I think I've won I think four it's, in a row. I think, it's, it's, I think it's like four of the last five. Or Have like you that. really? Yeah, he's, wow. been, he's been hot. That's I impressive. Think, I think Brad is <laughs> slacking. You may have to find another dad to replace Brad. <laughs> he, he's, in, he's in summer mode now that he doesn't know he's not working. He's just packing it in. Well, I got to say, when I, sat, over every morning. when I sat down next to him at your gala the other night, he did seem like he's gotten dumber. <laughs> Exactly. So I don't. Uh, <laughs> I you know you may have to find someone else to challenge me. Oh, uh, it's just not. Uh, it's not. Well, it's fun, but you know it's not the same. We'll it's see about all this tomorrow. Anymore. We'll see about all of this nonsense. <laughs> yeah, he's tomorrow. bringing Randy down. Randy needs a challenge yeah. to stay Thank sharp. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. So so Shaver, you've won four of the last five, but in fairness, Brad had won four straight leading up to that streak. So well, yeah, but not, you don't go back we're not that about far. Being fair, really. <laughs> You just don't go back that far. What have far. you done for me lately? That's what, we're, that's what we're all about. We'll talk to you tomorrow, Randy. See ya. Thank you. We'll be back. Tap Ass Morning Show. 69. <laughs> this show sucks. Who are you, fart knockers? 93X. CJ Ham for standard heating and air conditioning. When I'm on the field, I can take anything. But at home with my family, we like everything to be comfortable. That's why I trust the pros at Standard. They've been keeping Minnesotans like me comfortable for over 90 years. Is your cooling system making strange noises or not cooling properly? Don't wait for an AC breakdown this summer. Get a free in-home estimate with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Schedule your appointment today at standardheating.com. Trying to grab all the groceries in one trip? Oof, not how you would have done that. You know sometimes less is more. Like when you drive less and save with the USAA annual mileage discount. USAA. Get a quote today. Half-assed morning show. 93X.
Yeah, we're back. It is uh, 829 here on the 93X half Ass Morning Show. We want to thank Andrew DePala of the Minnesota Vikings again for stopping by our studios this morning. Hell of a good guy. Hope to have him back up in here again. And you know what? It, something just dawned on me while we were playing tunes there. We've talked a couple, three times about the passing of the Iron Sheik today, and there was this great Iron Sheik story I wanted to tell, and I forgot all along the way until now. Uh, bef- before we move away from the Iron Sheik, guy died yesterday at 81 years old. Maybe you've heard this story before, Josh. So in, I think it was 1987, Iron Sheik is riding in the passenger seat with Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And they're headed off to a show. I think it was after a show and they're headed to the next city. They were pulled over in New Jersey. And Iron Sheik had cocaine on him. And he was fired by the WWE, WWF at the time. But not because he had cocaine on him. Wapple, do you want to guess, being the hardcore wrestling fan that you are, why was Iron Sheik fired? I know. Oh, go ahead. Because he was riding with a face. He broke gimmick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's, yeah. he's the biggest heel, and he was riding in a car yeah. with a face. With Back a baby then, they face. Didn't, yeah, they didn't do that. They didn't. They didn't let good guys and bad guys hang out in public together. Right. What's yeah. the what's K-fabe. the uh, kayfabe. kayfabe? Don't break kayfabe. They they broke kayfabe, which was which meant everything in 1987. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean so much anymore. Characters often, uh, you know, go against. Kayfabe, but that is so funny to be. And it, it gives you a little insight on Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Let's not fire the guy for having a bucket of cocaine in a moving vehicle. It was a heel riding with a baby face. God, I love that story. And I, I'm sorry it took me so long to tell it. All right, here's the deal. I got something for you here. Something I saw on the Chive. I'm a Chive fan, or I think folks call themselves Chivers, I think, if they get really dialed into that website. What men fantasize about. And sure, there's the old joke and two chicks at the same time from Office Space. But this isn't all sexual sexual related. Okay? What men fantasize about. There are a few really solid, interesting answers in here. Dudes, text us if you want in on this. What do you fantasize about? Gals, too. 651-989-9393. It ha- doesn't have to be sexual at all. Like this example here. What men fantasize about? Uh, This is an entry from a chiver. We all fantasize about comebacks to future arguments. (laughs) (laughs) I don't do that. Does anyone here fantasize about comebacks to how you might handle a future argument? No, No. but there was, uh, I I think we set this aside in case something like this came up a couple weeks ago. A few lists of best comebacks. So if somebody throws something at you, here's a whole list you can choose from of comebacks for some of that. Wow, I'd like to. I'd like to hear that sometime. But I wonder, no, I mean we mentioned before our former coworker Ross would have these arguments in his head. True. To try and come up with a response to something, and often I shouldn't say often, but a few times it got him in trouble because he never listened to the other person, thought they were arguing with him, and they weren't. Right. <laughs> I can believe that you wouldn't have to think about comebacks to future arguments, Josh, because you are the greatest arguer I have ever seen. Oh, I don't think so. Yes, you are. I just I despise getting in them. I'll do my do whatever it takes not to be. I, usually I'll just let the other person have the win. Like, okay. I believe I believe that you try to avoid them. Right. Unless Absolutely. it's completely false information that could be damaging to someone else. But you keep yourself so level headed and you keep yourself so reasonable during arguments. Well, I let the rage get the better of me. And not only do I maybe not entirely know what I'm saying. I'm certainly not listening to the other arguer. But Josh, you keep very measured and you listen to every word of the person you're arguing with and then when they least expect it, you use their words against them. (laughs) I've seen it many times. You're brilliant with arguments. Well, I'd love to disagree. Right. (laughs) All right. Other things, according to this article, that men fantasize about. Winning the lottery and moving away to never be heard from again. Yeah, winning the lottery would be nice. That'd be sweet. I mean, there's definitely vehicles I fantasized about, you know, being able to afford something like that, or at like a house on a lake somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've certainly fantasized about winning the lottery or winning, you know, all the money I would ever want, but I don't want to move and never be seen or heard from again. I want people to recognize <laughs> my power and my wealth at that. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I'm not I'm not going to go hide off in a, in a cabin. I want to be a, a, a player. 
Okay, so some of this is sexual. Spontaneous sex is something that every man fantasizes about. Specifically, sexed, uh, sex just appears out of nowhere as a nice surprise without having to put in any effort. Okay. Yeah, that's, an, that's a great thing right there. Sure. I'll give it to you. If somebody here has that, <laughs> not, uh, Ashley, you're excluded. Thank you. But anybody else, sure. If you guys want it, I'll hand it out. My boyfriend hates surprise sex. Really? Be like, yeah. What do you mean? He wants to psych himself up? He seems to be know. pretty he excited just... about it when... <laughs> Stop it. He's got some routine where he goes in the bathroom and he listens to like an Eminem pump-up song. Well, I don't know. It's like, I, if I'm I ever like, like hey, like, like, you know, like right now, it's like, we got stuff to do. Like, no. Like, okay. Have you Cooking guys been married for 15 yeah, years? Yeah, like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> or I could just picture me like, Ashley, we're in the grocery store. We yeah, can't. Honestly, yeah, honestly, it is a lot. Yeah, I have a little too much, I think. <laughs> I think I fantasize about, like, what, what I'm going to eat next. Mm -hmm. I, mean, that, I, I was thinking about it the other day when we were talking about getting excited or angry about stuff. Like, I, I look forward to meals. You're not much of a fantasizer. Not really. No, you are not. I'm not I don't have that creativity. I, but I oh, do. Of course you do. I wake up. The first thing I always think when I wake up is... Uh, when can I go back to bed? And what am I going to eat today? That when, makes, when do I get to eat next? That same makes perfect here. sense. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. I, I certainly have those same fantasies. But, I, you know, we've, we've talked before. I've busted uh, Josh's chops before about how the guy once said that he masturbates thinking about his own wife. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, a crazy person? <laughs> well, but I, he, yeah, I never got to finish because you rip on me. My own wife leaving me. <laughs> 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 See, but, that's that's what I'm fantasizing. And oftentimes, when we have when we have conversations like this about fantasies and things, you don't you don't really fantasize much. And I think it's because you don't want for much. Mm, I think Josh does fantasize. Oh yeah, yeah. Go kart. You want an e scooter? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Was, is that what was you count one? those as fantasies? I mean, it, wanting I, to buy a go kart and she, wanting we could waffle. We're talking about things like. X-ray vision and things like that. I think you know, Josh just seems very content. Yeah, he's, I, he, he almost to it. the point where I'm concerned about it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want for much. No. X-ray vision, by the way, is in here. Yeah, that's cool. All men have fantasized about X-ray. Yeah, that does God. sound pretty cool. Yeah. I, I like this one from Double D's Jesus. I've been fantasizing about an engagement ring for over eight years. Oh. Girl, also, donuts and naps. That said. is way too long. Now, this one really caught my eye in this report on what all men fantasize about. I mean, who knows if we all, some of us do, some of us don't, but this is interesting. Doing something really cool and unexpected in a public scenario, preferably to assist a woman. <laughs> like I'll save Superman? you. A yeah. heroic act. Yeah. What? No way. That's not going to happen to the majority of men. <laughs> no, but that's why well, it's a but, fantasy. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's we can why. dream. I, I'll raise my hand right now what? and say, absolutely, I've fantasized about that. Like, you know, I don't know. A, a scenario maybe where uh, some big bully is giving a, a woman a hard time and I step in and just karate kick his ass. That's so cute. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like the dude. Oh, oh there it is. my word. That's it. And there's an Englishman nearby that says, oh, my word. <laughs> Doing something really cool and unexpected in a public scenario, preferably to assist a woman. And now here are a couple of examples where dudes were able to play this out in real life. And these are pretty cool stories. A dude said, once I was at a concert and I saw a can of beer flying across the sky the in, inside the arena here's a flying can of beer it's flying directly towards this girl's head i made a wildly difficult one-handed catch about an inch from her head i'm not usually coordinated so that made it all the better the crowd in the vicinity went wild. That has been the peak of my manhood and something I wish could happen every day. I've seen a video of a guy doing the same exact thing. I wonder if it's that guy. So an inch from her face, I'd be worried. Like I, I would be so in the moment and like oh, going for it that I guess like hit her in the face with my hand rather than catching the beer. So <laughs> you then she, get, punch she gets she gets she gets punched by me and then the beer can hits her. And I'm like, gosh, <laughs> I shouldn't have even tried. And then the the one single camera angle makes it look like yeah. you punched her. Uh -huh. There's no evidence <laughs> that the ball's coming anywhere near. We well, have a few texts coming in. Like I like I suggested, feel free to text us if you have. 
a fantasy you'd like to share with us, and it does not have to be sexual. A, a few have come in, uh, and, and, and a couple of them are simply about beating the one dude at work that you don't like, beating his ass. Just yeah. beating him up and down the damn warehouse or wherever you might be. Um, one guy said that he wants to beat up his childhood bully and then take his current wife and kid. <laughs> 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 These are mine now. <laughs> How about this? Um... Things that supposedly men all fantasize about. Random combat scenarios. <laughs> I've had random combat scenario fantasies. Like, like of you being in the army? Well, or? yeah, you know, I, I'll watch, uh, I love war movies. Oh, same here. I love I love war movies. And, you know, maybe as I'm, as I'm fading off to sleep that night, I picture myself in that kind of a scenario. Yeah, I think that's totally normal. The rest of you, is anyone random combat scenarios? No, no, not really. really. No, I, I am a big. I never win those. Or That's you... the problem. I start to fantasize about it, and then I lose in an embarrassing fashion. Usually, urine is soaking my pants. That kind as of thing. As soon as you step off the boat, a bullet ravages yeah. your body, and that's the end. Of... <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Well, or I accidentally put on the wrong uniform. My own guys turn against me. That oh, kind no. of thing. Oh no! Friendly fire. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a. Lo- I, I am a dreamer. I'll. I'll uh, I, I'd fall into line with a lot of these. This person fantasizes about being mugged and then delivering the meanest headbutt to the mugger, <laughs> then whip out the most badass ninja moves on his bitch ass. Then, as he walks away, he says, get a real job, weak hoe. Oh, my <laughs> God. Weak hoe. Now, yeah, that, that, that comes up in the topic. I, I thought it was in here somewhere. I'll find it. Uh, you know, others said simply things like having a comfortable and secure life. Boy, I I would say I'd fantasize about getting my mortgage paid off. That'd there you go. Cool. There you go. Um, doing nothing, having nothing to do, and being left alone to do it. Some of these fantasies are very simple. This one struck me as odd. Something that all men fantasize about. But this, when I when I read this one, it, it sounds more like something Ashley, who is a woman, would fantasize about. Befriending a wild animal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I think about that all the time. Gosh, you know, that takes me back to being a kid. I wanted that. And yeah. I, like you watch uh-huh. like the Jungle Book or something? Right, yeah. They're all about buddies with the animals. Yeah. I am convinced that like, if I was around a dangerous animal that usually destroys humans, somehow it could see the light in me and be like, no, she's different. She's going to love me. <laughs> I'm just convinced. Grizzly Adams, Gentle Ben, programs like that. When I was a kid, sure. I had little dreams about how I had a giant grizzly bear friend in the woods and we would get involved. Someone uh, mentioned here in the article, if grizzly bears don't want to be my friends, then why do they look so cuddly? (laughs) Why do they have such cute faces and tiny little ears? They're little ears. (laughs) It makes no sense. Uh, Other men fantasize about their own private soundproof bathroom. Oh, that could be helpful. Other men fantasize about having a woman actively pursue them for once. (laughs) Oh, here it is, Josh. You mentioned the the listener who fantasized about being mugged and then beating up that tired hoe or whatever they call them, a yep. weak hoe. Uh, here's a dude who says, in my mind, I have been unsuccessfully mugged many times. <laughs> <laughs> unsuccessfully mugged. Flying like Superman. Men truly do fantasize about being in action movies. Anybody? I think I, I remember I did it when I was younger. I remember the first time I watched Die Hard. I was like picturing me like having to do something like that at school or something like that. Yeah, and, yeah uh-huh. absolutely. Well, I've mentioned this many times. My, I've always just wanted to be a memorable death. Like a guy <laughs> yeah. that's just credited as bad guy number seven. Yeah. <laughs> and then Schwarzenegger or somebody has a clever line after they kill me. Like where they, It's just like so disgusting and memorable. Yeah. People talk uh-huh. about it. Hell yeah, I've fantasized about being the guy in Die Hard. Or maybe I'm one of the Hanson brothers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, all men, they say in the article, have fantasized about having a reason to say, Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare Boy, to die. I thought he was something. Guys, one of the greatest great, movie characters of all time. One of the best, just perfect movies of all time. Uh, this person here via text fantasizes about a brand new zero turn mower, and it's mostly non sexual. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I was at Home Depot uh, a couple of days ago and saw some of those and thought the same thing. I got to get one yeah. of those. God, those look cool. Zero turn mower. Says here, a lot of men have fantasized about Stacy's mom. <laughs> We've got well, a she pot- does have it going on. She does. 
there's a douchiness to them. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Oh, it's unbelievable. We're getting there. 851. I love this. I'm reading through the random fantasies of our listening audience. We were having a conversation earlier about an article that supposedly listed the things that all men fantasize about. And it was a couple sexual things, I guess. Uh, just a random sexual encounter. But there was some really entertaining and interesting stuff like... Uh, Men fantasize about combat scenarios. Men fantasize about performing a heroic act in the presence of women. Things like that. Uh, this is just so much fun learning more about you as I'm reading some of the fantasies of our listing audience. Being the sole survivor in a zombie movie. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Well, I guess I'd want more than just Yeah, I guess me. I'd be lonely then, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'd want maybe some hot uh, redhead or something yeah, to survive I'd... with me. Or, yeah. or a dog or something. I'll take Emma Stone from Zombieland. Over but dog. Emma Stone? Yeah, she was in um, the Zombieland oh, movies. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, but, you know, some of this stuff is just so simple, I get a huge kick out of it. Like trucking Farmer Jesus. He fantasizes about being the only vehicle on the road. <laughs> yeah, if you're a trucking farmer, you probably deal with a lot of asshats in traffic. He just fantasizes about being the only swinging D on the road. Uh, having a huge hog like Josh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that impressive. <laughs> Short but fat cheeses fantasizes that she's Wonder Woman. Me too. That's cool. Now check this one out. This is from a female. I don't have a name. Um, some of this stuff is sexual. She said her fantasy is finding a beautiful man that wants to boink my brains out. Oh. To the point where I am speechless. And then he just goes on about his life like it never happened. Dana? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's something that could be arranged pretty easily for her. Step, step in, Dana. <laughs> Poop pumping Jesus. Fantasizes, uh, how do I say that? He fantasizes about having a boat and catching a big-ass walleye. That'd be pretty sweet. One of our listeners fantasizes about having the biggest Transformers collection. Mm. Who amongst us has the largest Transformers collection? Uh, I have zero. Not me, I yeah. zero. Uh -uh. Are we all tied at zero? Yeah. All tied at zero. <laughs> so as a kid, I would have loved that. Yeah. Uh, but in that same vein, though, I do. I follow accounts on Instagram where people just have basements full of Lego sets, and I think that just looks so cool, and I'm jealous of that. You've that, got that, quite a bit. I got quite a bit, but this is nothing. This is like massive, massive basements that just go on and on in every set imaginable. Hairstylist Jesus fantasizes about being in a situation where her giving someone a strip tease will save the world. Oh! <laughs> I say try it out. <laughs> Man, I mean, I don't think I've ever even seen that played out in a movie. Uh-uh. Maybe that's what we need to turn things around right now is for her to give somebody a strip tease. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we'll start going back the other direction. Things will get better. That is brilliant. Bloodshot Eyes Jesus says to win the Mortal Kombat tournament and save the world. A couple <laughs> of people saving the world. Saving uh, the world, we could use that, sure. Ask me about CrossFit, Jesus. I fantasized about killing a person I hate. My wife would contact him, tell him she has a fantasy to get even with me, and then just walk in the house and ravage her. Then when he walks in the door, five in the chest from me. Hey, he broke in, right? Man. Wow. <laughs> this person fantasizes about smoking the perfect brisket. <laughs> I'll tell you. Brisket, brisket is hard to do. I wish I could do all that stuff. Yeah, same here. I got to learn Some how to talent. do that. I love those simple ones so much. Yeah. You know, that's exactly where we're going with this. I fantasize about my husband playing Xbox with a smile on his face and laughing and not screaming at it all the time. Oh, <laughs> wow. That'd be crazy. How about from Lake Street Handshake Jesus getting in a Blues Brothers like car chase? Oh, that would be fun. Wow, that's a good one. Having a dog that can talk and can be my wingman, <laughs> picking up chicks from Utah Raised Jesus. Socially inept Jesus, another simple one. I fantasize about having the money for home improvements and landscaping. Yeah. Home yeah. improvements Sam. and landscaping, Ooh. you guys. I can't, even, some... I can't even afford home improvement DVDs, let alone actual <laughs> home improvements. Candy Jesus, how about a real life purge and killing all the people I can't stand? Mm. Car, car sales Jesus dreams of having an attack honey badger. How cool would that be, he says. <laughs> they don't care. They'll bring anything down. I could see you having an attack honey badger. I would love that. Having a pile of superpowers and using them purely for personal gain is one of our listeners' fantasies. Yeah. I could see if I gained superpowers abusing them immediately. <laughs> immediately. Uh, the simple ones... 
like, say, no longer Florida man Jesus. I fantasize about 300 acres with a house in the middle. That'd be cool. Another one of our listeners fantasizes about early retirement. Oh, that's a good one. Another one of our listeners fantasizes about fighting off the bad guys while my loved ones escape. Hairstylist Jesus has checked back in. She's the one that wants to save the world with the strip tease. Yes. She's on her way to work at the salon. First haircut gets a strip tease, saving the world. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Wish I had hair <laughs> that needed to be cut with a scissors and not a pube trimmer. Uh, it, this has been fun. Uh, another uh, member of our listing audience says, I fantasize about, uh, fantasize about things like a hole-in-one or a half-court buzzer beater or punching people in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and then one final that I have on my end of things. I fantasize about my wife developing a heart condition and her parents dying. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. All right. Um, get help, maybe. <laughs> that got dark. Hey, don't judge his fantasy. <laughs> Why are we judging yeah. other people's fantasies? That's not fair. Yeah. We wouldn't judge your fantasy. <laughs> I, I, apo cool. I apologize for fantasy shaming. Yeah, both <laughs> you guys jumped on me. <laughs> Happy 52nd birthday to Rug Burnt Nipples Jesus from Blacktop oh. Mojo Mofo Daddy O Jesus. Happy birthday to Nina from Jesse. Happy birthday to Sean, and in honor of the passing of professional wrestler and Twitter star The Iron Cheek, don't be a jabroni today, and F Hulk Hogan. <laughs> the 93X FS Morning Show. 93. The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Don't wait for an AC breakdown this summer. Get a free in-home estimate with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Schedule your appointment today at standardheating.com.